Welcome everybody to the NECC. We've got ourselves here on the B stream today. Fairly foreign for me in Dallas, but we're still happy to be here. Up first on the chopping block is that UNA roster facing the CMU side, and we have a little bit of a change up for you guys. UNA unable to field the full five man roster, so they brought three here and they're committed to playing at Dallas. No money here. Stan the Carman 84 and Etchwin. All on the board, a mix between senior, freshman, and junior. And then for CMU, well, Dallas, it's a full five, man. It most definitely is, and that's kind of the exciting thing to me, because you and I are already went ahead and cast her to 4v5, and that game actually <laughs> went to an overtime. Keep yes, your I mean, things are very, very close. You never know what could happen in the game of Valorant. More importantly, here at the NECC, so I'm definitely excited to see what exactly can be on the handle. But more importantly, though, let's go and talk about the maps, obviously, because that's going to be a big factor here as well. We got Ascent, we got Bind, and we got Pearl as our lineup. So obviously, we know the maps, we know the way these things are going to roll out. But I mean, even then, talking about these maps, we'd like to talk a lot about how these maps, they talk about the holes, talk about the pros, the cons, whatever need be. It all comes down to when you got three players, it's going to be very, very particular to make sure that you line everything up perfectly and have yourself able to fill every single role, which is difficult to do because you got to reload, so you got to take a sacrifice somewhere. Yeah, there's going to be shortcomings at one point or another on every single map, and the problem here is the fact that UNA may have a little bit more than a couple shortcomings when it comes to the fact they can only field three, and that means that they're missing two agents that will really help them engage towards these sites. UNA on the right side, fix it up for your CMU on that left, like we mentioned before. Looks like CMU have completely locked in their team strategy and what they're going for. A Phoenix is the only duelist for their side, the KO to try and initiate. They have that Omen. They also have that Fade that's been so popular, and they're bringing out a KJ as well to really top things off for their side. UNA is trying to figure still out what they're necessarily wanting to play. Looks like a possibility for a very aggressive lineup just trying to say, hey, you know, we know we are limited in terms of total utility and kit that we can bring to the table, so let's just go guns up, face value, send it straight to them, and I I think that's a very solid lineup for the fact that they're down two players. Yeah, I think so as well. I mean, there's really only two options to go if you do want to knock off all the corners necessary. I mean, you can go for this approach that we're seeing with the initiators, with the duelists, if you go ahead and ring it out. And then you just, once again, on the defense, just play for retake. Give up these sites, play across the map. You are going to need that information, two so that looks agents. like for that spot's going to be filled in by the fade. But I mean, everything else, it just comes down to make sure you can play aggressive and go with these huge power picks to really overwhelm your opposition. Even then, though, we could also see some of a switch around because initiators are also not only kind of making sure that with Sentinels not being nearly as potent, with Chamber kind of just being that insane fragger who has that trademark available, you could go instead for an initiator to fill in that slot as well to also compensate for the duelists as well because we've seen KOs fill in those slots time and time again. So it's not a foreign concept by any means necessary. You just have to make sure to know when to really employ what piece of utility and be a lot more select than what you typically would be. So I'm intrigued to see what exactly UNA is going to do with this three-man composition and exactly how much they can accomplish because I mean, we saw it in that four-man roster scenario. They could just be buying for time here. Uh, a possibility, to say the least, that they're going to spend a lot of their attacking rounds really hoping for that first blood. I'd expect every engagement they try to pick out will be a 2v1 at the very least, but the problem still lies in, even when a fight is necessarily at an advantage and you have a 2v1, somehow you're able to isolate a single player in CMU who maybe was overextending for information or trying to use a piece of utility to gather information that way. Either way, even if you and A Purple manage to figure out a way to capitalize on the situation, damage is still going to get tagged back in between. This may be a lower division in regard that we're not seeing champions division here dallas but it's still a very competent event these players know how to play they know how to play valorant and they're going yep. to punish these peaks even if they lose the fight in the process they're not getting out of there without at least tagging down a player at the very same time and look what we're seeing cmu do from the very get-go right out through v main two players quickly aggressing to maybe try to find a player mm. over towards b lobby quickly being spotted the whole roster of una purple who are working over towards link and that's what a ko can do for you with that <laughs> very nice use of the zero point and every single time, I mean, once you go ahead and get the snuff out of at least one of these players, you know it's going to be an all three man push coming through. I mean, they're not going to try to go for these 1v5s yeah. going on a site, these little splits you got going on. And even then, you do have enough numbers when getting onto a site, you can say, look, no problem here. I mean, best case scenario, it's a 3v2. Worst case, a 3v3. And if we win that out anyways, we should have something left over to really employ going for this retake scenario. So looking for a little bit of aggression, trying to get onto that site, but instead a big swing out coming through. Two players already down as Andy makes sure to get that attempt and looks for a follow-up. Can't find that third, but Nyquil there to put this round to sleep and go into the next one with the fours. See what I mentioned there as well. You try to isolate a player, you're able to swing to a position to find a couple kills, but even when you're able to get damage out and find frags, Dallas, you're taking damage 
damage in the process. This isn't a realism style game where the single shot will kill. No, this is a very strenuous match where you're on the attack for UNA, where you have a man, two man disadvantage, and you're trying to work through the uh, principles, the basics of Valorant, trying to go step by step, checking off everything on that board to make sure you're giving yourself the best chances possible. But CMU, they have so much leeway by saying, okay, you can pick that fight. You can go in even position. Even when you're pushing in sight, we know we'll at least have an even man advantage or just one down and have the man advantage for the retake every single time. Just makes things so much e easier for them. And when you have a bonus round here in round to like seeing you do makes things even easier Rhett sends out a quick use of the fragment that allows them to pick off one nobody here is able to take themselves their own frag that equalizes things a little bit but still at a man disadvantage for una and they're still trying to work in here through ma i wouldn't go ahead and rely on that man disadvantage too much because yeah. that's gonna see be something we see in spawn so already <laughs> once again another round to go through for the likes of all uh Central Methodist, but I mean, it's these round situations where you know the force is coming through. You know these guns are going to be whipping out for the likes of Central Methodist. So you have to go ahead and just kind of play as much as you can, save that money, look to go into the next, and hopefully get your rifle stocked up right here, right now. And it already looks like they're going for that a little bit. Etchuan and Stan both have enough money to go for these buys, but uh, no money here doesn't really have everything available to them. They're looking to go ahead and get that half over to work with off the Vandal as well. So that's going to be a little bit difficult knowing that even though you are Arena, you need to make sure you win that first fight. Otherwise, it's all going to be for nothing. Tough position to work from, as always. Something we're expected to see throughout the entire game. Remove the vocabulary of a man advantage, like you mentioned, out of the list here for this matchup. It's just going to be the story, the tale of the tape, so to say. Actually, when they're able to be able to find themselves, one takes down that KO of a red that gathered information so paramount to the success there of CMU in round one and two. Now they have the option to swing over towards that B side because the two players defending B have started to migrate, so to say, over towards market, maybe finding themselves a new home for winter but once the heat starts to get hot like with phoenix gand who has the quick use of the curveball in hand maybe a little bit dicey for the side of una purple no money oh. here able to find themselves a nice frag the rifles being great right now for una purple and we can finally mention the man count and even odds after two frags by una we're a 3v3 and it looks like sandor may be able to find mm. themselves a kill able oh. to find two and the man advantage shrinks once again for una yeah, bad situation there towards the middle of the math. I mean, you know those exchanges are going to go through, but you're expecting to be a little more one-sided after you and A Purple find themselves that even matchup thus far, looking to carry on the rest of the round with that. But it all comes down to Etuan, that Neon, looking to go ahead and play just aggressive. Use that fast lane as a little bit more reactionary, looking to go ahead and use in that post-plant scenario. So you typically wait to go ahead and use for it, but already a spike going down, you know you have two rifles in the middle of the map that you can... Feel free to pick up these sides of Central Methodist and save that money, but that's not an option they're going for. Still looking to go ahead and use these kind of saved options. The Sheriff in hand to close out a round like that and get that one tap to send yourself in the next one of the 3-0 lead. And that will allow for them to pick up the rifles at the very least to work with. Looks like Andy has managed to gain a Phantom. Nyquil will only get a Spectre. I don't think they'll be able to make that quick sprint, that hasty relocation over towards Link where two players were felt on the sign of Urine Purple. Unfortunate, but CMU not really squandering all the chances they have been given, though that was a really great round for UNA all around, to be frank. Then making that one at least close and having some competition for it is good for them and shows that they will be able to compete throughout this matchup. Not enough money, though, for the full team to buy out. Looks like Stan the Carman will have to take a page of the No Money Here's book. They'll go no armor instead of soft armor and still bring that rifle, saying, we at least want to be able to compete we still want to be able to find frags that's where our team is lacking the most with the leer rework that came through with the slight buff over towards reyna that allows for them to get a really great kind of denial of buffer of space there for nyquil but there goes gan and andy on the quick flank and well andy is here fall to the ground and that's exactly what una purple do yeah, big stance here coming into these rounds. We I mean, obviously to be expected to some extent, but now I'm mean, going to get to a 4-0 lead. You see Central Methodist kind of looking to work this thing out a little bit more. So just trying to carry this momentum on as much as they can, knowing that even in that last round, they didn't pick up those guns that I mentioned. They still said with the Sheriff's going to be more than enough to be working with, and that's really what they proved to us. But maybe they could be the same situation here for UNA Purple as they're going ahead having these Sheriff's in hand for at least two of those players. Half armors to be employed. So this is going to be a little bit of an uh, eco round for them, but not really too much to be stressed about knowing that i mean even then the situation is a little too good but whenever you rob with those guns away almost a good percentage of your team then has those guns to work with so i mean you gotta look at the positives rather than the negatives and see what you can really work out here positives maybe few and far between but always look on the bright side in this scenario classics in hand for etchewin and it looks like they'll move to the high ground off the top of bike 
may be the right play for terms of gathering information, but apparently struggling to do so. It doesn't look like there's any player holed up inside Winery either for the side of CMU, where Red has played just a couple rounds before. Problem still lies, though, inside Walkway. Nyquil swings out from Puppy and cuts down all three remaining players of UNA Purple and will win another round for CMU in a row. Yeah, just going ahead, carrying this through, having an ultimate now on the board to work with that a Nyquil and that Nightfall. That's going to be good for those retake situations. But I mean, looking at Central Methods, what they've done thus far, they're just bringing the aggression to them. No one in these spawns using those zero points, looking to get that information. No one is going to be a three man stack onto these sites. You just play the aggressive game, look to go ahead and force it up the throat, look to get these rounds done as fast as possible, and go on to the next one. So it's those situations, I mean, Central Methods are just utilizing those numbers to their advantage. And honestly, we see a lot of teams, honestly, could take a little bit of an influence from this game specifically to say look when you have the numbers just work off those ones look to overwhelm your opposition because even then in a lot of closer games you don't see those tactics employed Hawks and Prowler sent in tandem by the side of CMU and because of that they'll force back the rest of UNA and able to take down no money here force him to stay still inside lobby there goes Andy from Central Courtyard and NyQuil will finally swing out through that lobby it's just the same CMU will now succeed another flawless round for themselves bring this one up to 6-0 and UNA Purple once again in a scenario where, well, one of their players actually went can full buy, but it's not really the case. Just flat, plain, and simple. For the rest of the team, they're going to have to go for that full rifle, no armor. Yeah, I mean, that's really all you can do here in the already the timeouts to be employed here to expect to go ahead let's see if we can slow this game down a little bit figure out what's going on here because central method is already hitting six rounds obviously isn't a good look thus far but you got to figure out what exactly you can do i mean you had that empress to work off of you don't have that overdrive anymore which is something they saw on that third round and going ahead and being used the nightfall i feel like is the most important ultimate we're going to get out of una purple besides that empress i mean it comes down to the strategy that you're looking to employ the one you're looking to follow through with can you get aggressive off those guns or can you really go ahead and work your mind and flex that a little bit here on the field there's a lot of questions to be answered in una purple after this timeout we may get the answer to at least one of those because they do have the rifles in hand and we're going to see exactly how aggressive they get with it if that empress is employed or not all about the basics of Valorant for the side of UNA. I mentioned it before in the agent selection, them being hyper limited when it comes to who they can pick up and what abilities and kits they can totally bring. Being aggressive with the Neon and the Reyna, who had that slight buff that makes her a little bit more capable in all accounts. Those are very important factors to UNA to try to work off of. But the problem is, CMU have such great zoning kits. They have the Fade that they can use the Haunt over the top to prowl around the corner. They got flashes for the Phoenix. They've got the zero point for we're suppressing an information, meaning that none of that duelist kit that's in the hands of UNA Purple can actually be utilized. There's so much there for the side of CMU that it still makes it way too difficult for UNA to try to capitalize. A Stinger is in hand for the form uh, foremost player. They'll lose their life. That will allow for one to pick it back up. Caught within a fire, but it doesn't seem to matter to Gand. They'll still find both somehow, some way. A 3k for them in the round, and CMU will now climb up another one. Yeah, big senses here already. I mean, getting themselves a guaranteed advantage when it comes right to the second half. That is, depending on how many rounds we have going into that second half as it stands right now. So, another round, gone ahead, done and dusted, looking at the streaks. I mean, you have yourself some money building up there on the side, but we haven't even seen any spike plants go down besides that round three, and that's really what it comes down to. We're seeing UNA go ahead and get that intel thrown onto them so early, and they're even not really switching up the strategy too much. We've seen them hit B every single round, and sure, you want that control towards the map. You want to go ahead and kind of keep those eyes on the map and figure out where you may have somewhat of a flank going through. But instead of going for that approach right towards B main, they're looking to fight for the middle of the map and kind of put some diversity in this game. Slow and steady, Vratruin once again. Unfortunately, they lose their reign of no money here, and they'll lose their life just the same. Once again, that curveball in the hands of their Phoenix is just... Pretty much the sole proprietor of why CMU have been able to completely ruin UNA Purple's entire strategy of playing a little bit farther back and hoping for that first pick once these players start to send themselves out. It's rough to say the least for them, but Stan the Carman is trying to work all the way back through. They stepped in through Tree Sign, now stepping up through Gardens and back through Defender Spawn, sitting at bottom of mid. They see Nyquil and they waited for the perfect moment to take the shot. Took them a moment, but they'll manage to secure it at the very least. Hot sent over through that market door. Nobody on B, however. They'll so send a Prowler through B main. The Prowler will expire. Not enough information gathered off of it. A second one to follow suit, but there goes the zero point. No control left, and red will be killed, but it doesn't seem to matter. Gand once again able to secure another frag, and UNA Purple will lose another round. Yeah, I mean, just not looking good so far. Even in these rounds, we're seeing the spike get caught out, and that's the biggest thing we're seeing from them. It has to go ahead, kind of be there in the middle. You got to make sure to protect it, keep it right there in front of the Alpha and the Omega, looking to go ahead, beginning and end. Regardless of how you get yourself on the site, you need to make sure that even if you don't, you still have that 
kind of insurance of that spike to know that you can still flip around on, on its head you can really just make it something out of whatever you need but already we're not seeing too much out of that instead but we are seeing two ultimates still on the field for you and a purple they can utilize these to at least get themselves one round they didn't do it in the last one but i mean now with half armors maybe that could be employed as somewhat of a compensation for the lack thereof compensation may be key a slow push, though, by UNA up through Walkway. This is something we haven't necessarily seen from them. We saw them trying to pivot from A main over towards Walkway before, but they were cut down by the fade over on CMU side. It wasn't even a complication for them. It was one man, and it was a classic round for UNA anyways. This time around, though, they'll at least get Spike now onto site, able to secure down a plant at minimum. That's when we'll, we'll go and move over to switch, pull it quickly. Spike will go down in a nightfall to force back that KO of red just a little bit further over the side of CMU. They'll They'll manage to get down Spike with a full three-man roster. Still an odd thing to say at the very least. Zero point will be sent around the corner and, well, Gand is unfazed by it. Rifle up, good for one. Hunting for the second. A Prowler now goes down to hell, but it's a oh, great shot by No Money here. Able to heal with two, but Nyquil puts them to sleep and saves another round for CMU to spike UNA, making it extremely close. And that's all it really came down to is, I mean, we saw both those ultimates really go ahead and be whipped out. We saw the Nightfall come around and exchange. I mean, that Decay was doing work at least there for a little bit, creating somewhat of an intimidation factor for UNA to go ahead and cower a little bit, play towards these corners and get a little bit more kind of comfy in those situations. But instead, there's just only so much you can do. That was the only thing employed by Central Methodist, and that's the biggest thing going forward for them. They still have a shutdown to work with. They still have a lot more players to be working off of, and even then, plenty more money in their pockets. You can see those things are just swelling up. I mean, you look at Xandor. 8,800. You look at the likes of Gan, who just had like 9K before this purchase came through. I mean, you can buy for squad mates. You can do whatever you need. Everything's really just going to line out for you over and over again. And you have to just look to use that to your advantage. It's honestly, it's just kind of occurring passively. Uh, for the time being, for UNA, it's just going to be a matter of the same old, same old. Quickly push over towards that A side. Less of an avenue over through that walkway and courtyard. Now a little bit more direct through the arches. A single player holding up in rafters, though. Look how quickly CMU have started to pivot over to assist the rest of the team. Flash over the top. That is the pop flash there from the KO. Gan's going to swing out through door. Nobody's pulled switch. There goes the best Emperor Palpatine impression UNA can bring to the table, but it still has not managed to find a kill and it gets shut down by Andy. One player remaining. Stay in the car, man's good for one, but Kiana, oh, sorry, good for two. I stand corrected. We can't find more than that, and ultimately CMU will find themselves with another round to their name. Yeah, I mean, the stance so far, just let me go ahead, see what you can really bribe out right now, knowing that even then, I mean, every single round, you're seeing these exchanges being made. The Central Methodists, they weren't just waiting to use these ultimates to kind of put the nail in the coffin. Instead, they're waiting to use it on these rounds so they know they can exchange. They knew they get something to substitute for that the next round for a lack thereof. I mean, once again, we saw, obviously, the nightfall. Then we saw the shutdown. Now, after those rounds, we're not really still empty just yet. We got a run it back and a null command both to employ in a round like this. And it's looking good for us because, I mean, just again and again and again and again, we're spacing these things out. We're really creating the tempo on the defensive side, knowing that you're going to be scared of these aspects of the game. And we're going to make sure to use that to the full extent. All about the principles once again for UNA. It's been a bit of a problem for them, though. When they get on the site, they're actually able to pull up quite a big fight there, Dallas, which is an impressive fact for them considering the disadvantage they have so obviously been put in in this scenario. But they're still making good round scenarios. It's just a matter of closing them out. Certain players not able to find a secure enough position in a post plant to find themselves one or two picks that are kind of necessitated of them when in terms of the disadvantage they have. No money here quickly forced back, though there was quite a space there to be utilized. Ganda, though, needs only a gun to secure the frag. They'll take Stan the Carman off the board. Guardian up for no money here, hoping they can tag down Ganda. They get a little bit of a wall bang, but through that corner that's quite thick, they're not able to secure the kill until finally Ganda will swing back out. But there goes the shorty on the flank. Xander saying, hey, we don't have to use rifles necessarily. I'll just sneak up on my prey. Atchuan let them get to that position, supposedly. They're able to find one, make it two. Now Atchuan needs to get a 4k to win out the round but still with only two players remaining there's still quite a lot of possibilities here on the board for una to find themselves a round win just need to deal with andy in the fade currently sitting on staircase of nyquil who has been quite a threat to their side throughout this one sliding forward it's and just barely able to make it past the precipice of danger but the second that mm. that fast lane fades dallas it's all she wrote as andy secures the last kill 
Yeah, the unfortunate circumstance. Once you hear the Odin fire rain down, you know it's going to right there towards that main area, and there's not really too much you can do without crossing that and taking some shots in the meantime. That as a Neon, you could honestly just go across the map, not really have too many real punishments laid out for you, knowing that even then the clock is still fairly close. I mean, you know you still have that to work off of. Knowing that Neon, that's her specialty, is making as much out of little time as possible because nobody else has an exchange of speed that she brings into the game. But still, 11 is looking at the lineup thus far from the Shadows to work with now added onto the board. Not really too much you can do with that as an Omen player besides maybe going into the spawn, but knowing that once again that every single time if you just you use consistency, if you use the numbers, the outlines, statistics, the percentages, they're probably going to be right in B main once more. And that's why you see the run it down, just running it down in that spot, getting at least one of those kills. Run it down. Isn't that the phrase you're always saying? Down. Run it back. <laughs> Run it back. That's what it is. That's kind of what C and U have been going. I honestly, I would give the mentality of U and A a big boon here. They're saying even after all these losses and not finding any success for themselves, they're still fighting in these rounds. They're still competing. That is a really yeah. big mindset you need as a gamer, especially trying to compete in esports. And it's been working out for them to a certain degree. Able to DBNO the player of red. They need to be kind of restabilized. We brought back up to full fighting shape, but it's just no money here left standing. Nobody's going to go for that restabilization. Andy playing short inside courtyard. They're able to find the kill. It was Red who eventually had died for not being restabilized. But two players once again surviving for CMU, and that will be a flawless half of them going 12-0. But well, League World still has about two weeks left, so I'm going to try and use that term as much as possible I have it given to me, all right? I know it's not exactly the right word, but we even then don't get that very many Phoenixes either in terms of the league. So, I mean, that's that signing in its own right that I we even get the pleasure of throwing out that name, throwing out those abilities, because, I mean, knowing the oppression, knowing the amount of uh, just aggregation you can get out of the likes of what Gan is providing in this game, sure only being 9-5, and five, but still being just one kill shy of Nightfall, who's been just an outstanding on a consistent basis of getting these kills, getting that information, and even then following up and executing off of what Red's been doing. Only at 4-5, and five, but that null command, even then, those zero points have been so crucial in just going ahead and letting you know what the game plan is looking like off the get-go that you're just ready for it immediately. Quick aggression by CMU saying, hey, well, they can't stop all five of us. Let's go ahead and just extend for a bit of a post-plant scenario here inside of A. Bit of an overextension by Xander, not expecting all three of UNA to be stacked up inside Raptors, apparently picking the wrong site. Pop flash sent out by Red, and with the ability for that to be popped out a little bit slower, makes things more difficult for CMU, and it looks like UNA may be able to squeak themselves out around, but they still have to deal with Gand. The top player, so to say, for the side of CMU in regards to dealing with UNA all by their lonesome. That's what Phoenix specializes in at the moment, but lack of a total kit here for a pistol round and only a frenzy you don't have very many rounds to deal with both players and well gan still doesn't know exactly where they lie we'll send go and send down a molly down below deals with stan very quickly now down to the 1v1 has to flick for the kill oh! and saved for the side of cmu as they'll secure themselves a flawless victory in a 13-0 fashion though there were quite a few especially that last round dallas dicey scenarios for them yeah, that's all it really comes down to, man. I mean, obviously, we can't know 13-0, but I like UNA's attitude here. They're looking to stay in the game. They're trying to do as much as possible. We even saw, as you mentioned, a couple of those rounds get as close as you can yeah. really ask for. And, I mean, it's those situations, it's those scenarios that, honestly, I say it's good training for them. I mean, you're going ahead in Valorant nine times out of ten. You're going to be working from behind. And you need to in. Guaranteed on those rounds where you're looking at the frags aren't exactly even across the board and you're having to scrap something together. Sure, the agent composition wasn't really there for it, but hey, that's not really what you're worried about. Can you hit those shots? Can you outmaneuver your opposition? Can you get a feel across the map and work off that intel? We didn't see too much of that with those, I mean, straightforward pushes on the B so consistently, but still, to know they're still in this game and know they still want to go ahead and keep things going as long as possible, they're in this to win it, obviously, and we're going to see with another map, too, if that's a possibility. We'll have to figure it out, but before we head on over towards map two, hopefully with a full five for both sides, we'll take a quick break before then, so make sure you stay tuned for that one. We'll be right back after a quick little break.
Welcome back here, right here to NECC. We're now moving on to map two here this series between the likes of a UNA Purple and Central Methodist University. We have ourselves a full roster now. If we went ahead and missed out on that first map, we did get some players to go ahead and get filled in for those slots. So now we're getting a full 5v5, and maybe this will go to map three just as a solution to, and probably as a compromise to that first one, considering that. I mean, we mentioned it already. They were looking for these teams. They were looking for these players. They were looking for these rounds, more importantly, to have some relevancy in the game. But now as they go into bind, we talk about speed is the name of the game. And it already looks like to be cemented by UNA with that dual spec coming out of Neon. You got to keep in mind as well, when you're talking about the difficulties of a map like Bind, especially when you're already down, you really have to play with everything you have. They have to yeah. force a win on this second map if you're UNA to even compete on a third. And that's a map of Pearl. How do you play on a map like Pearl, a brand new map to the scene, something that teams still are struggling to try and find themselves comfortable with, and you're doing it without your full main roster? It's going to be very interesting to see how Du and Bagabak adjust to the strategy here for this UNA roster to see if they can really contend at the same level. But we're going to go ahead and look at our agent selection as well. CMU, they are steadfast all over again with their agent selection. They know what they want to do. They know what they're going to bring. A Viper, Chamber, Sky, Astra, and Rays. A fairly standardized lineup all across the board for them. They're primed to start things off on the defense first and foremost the most simply are and i think it comes down to these exchanges of these rounds because you can already look at these agent selections on each side i mean look at that sky coming up from cmu i love the employment of her here recently she hasn't gotten enough love agent. for these changes of the guiding light she's become that much more strong and even then on bind it's going to be her favorite map i want to say across the board i mean sure breeze you'll see her as a flex to go ahead and work along with that sova to bring out those flashes but here on bind i mean we talk about speed and we talk about aggression being the name of the game that Tasmanian Tiger is huge for them. I mean, even in those Seekers, going ahead, using those as somewhat a little bit of bullet fodder to get onto that site and still reinforce the ideology. She's just great across the board. It can really be hampered down here. All about the, well, can't say basics anymore now, can I, Dallas? Full team for both sides. I'm expecting Bayern to be a little bit more of that standard brawl that it truly does come down to. You mentioned those changes to Sky and that Tasmanian Tiger. Yes, of course, will be quite nice. But starting off on the defense with that one, it's going to be all about gathering information before taking the fight back to them. The fact that we do not see a Sky on the side of UNA for their lineup means that they're going to struggle a little bit to get that kind of mm, stun concussive blast back in the other direction. <laughs> a lot of the Neon to work with, though, for that mobility. Ability. they're not going to be hard pressed to quickly engage towards that site but it's going to be another battle of watching that flank there if do on that kj we mentioned it before do and box yep. subbing in for this one all about comfortability and i wouldn't be shocked to see them pick up just what they're comfortable with their you know go-to selection in every game and the other rest of the una purple squad saying okay we'll let them have this we can adjust because we know what we want to do we can just let them and guide them they need that igl strategy to kind of lead the way yeah, and that's kind of the interesting thing to me is this double sentinel setup. We don't see too much of this at all. And even then, something we don't see too much is that snake bite gravity well combo already coming out right there towards A main. Something that's so aggressive, almost like that fade tether with the paint shell combo, but its own different incantation of it, which I'm already loving coming out from Central Methodist. All oh, once again, the fight begins on the site, and UNA have started to engage. No frags just yet for either side. Nyquil sitting back behind the triple stack radiant eye crate of elbow. Trying to play fairly smart with that ghost. The toxic screen, though, will eventually dissipate, meaning that the defense here of CMU will start to struggle as the capsized boat, so to say, of UNA strategy will start to go over towards that B side, quickly utilizing that TP. And there goes the could use that trademark, gather a little bit more intel. Andy with a flick! Nasty shots of 3K! Oh Off the back with a ghost! And wow, UNA saying, hey, this side's ours for the taking. It's anything but leaving just stand the car man left standing. Where the heck did that come out of, Alice? What in the world? Well, I mean, if you're looking for reasons, say, so why do Chambers now buy Ghost? Because, the, you know, obviously the Headhunter shots are a lot more expensive. There's a reason why. You can actually <laughs> keep on taking those shots, getting those kills. If you miss one, it doesn't cost yourself too much money. But right there, Stan the Car Man goes ahead and warrants at least that 150 spin, at least on one of those bullets. Has one still available to go with. But for that, that's going to be nothing but classic. Looking for those kills, or at least looking for a gun to pick up off somebody else, knowing that kills can be out there, kind of straining by that fountain. You're going to have other players kind of circling themselves around it, looking to find that execution. That's exactly what happens. Four players alive there towards the rear end of that round. Not too much of a big of a deal, though, because you know that these forces are coming through. You know the armor buys are coming out. And more importantly, we see specters mostly across the board, besides that one ghost, maybe, and that marshal coming through. 
How do you expect us to see the change in strategy for UNA? All things considered, they just went to that last game being as aggressive as possible considering they were down two players, two duelists, and a fade to follow through behind it. And even here now, you said double sentinel still having to deal with the fact that they don't have much aggression bar but the yeah. neon. They don't have the boost back to create and close space as well. They're struggling for a default play here on the map of bind, but it's also kind of the expected result considering that they're missing two players. How do you think they have to adjust their place down, not just for the rest of this attack once they start to get rifles but also defense or they have to adjust on the fly well it looks like they're kind of cashing in for that second half i mean considering they have that double sentinel they can be anywhere in the map but once you have that rendezvous to go ahead and double stack onto his site when you realize that bind you can literally be anywhere at one point but talk about aggression not going to work out really too well for the side of central method is oddly enough as you do see a huge exchange coming through there a couple kills initially coming to that side knocking a couple of those guns out for cmu but at the end of the day you and a purple they didn't buy up anything they weren't expected to win that round because they want to go ahead and buy up in this one and that's exactly what they're doing four rifles across the board except for etchuan able to go ahead and buy that specter looking to compensate where necessary and even then knowing that a bonus is coming through for central method to say honestly i would go for something like a sheriff and maybe pick up one of those specters knowing you can still save that money Losing two players in the last round, that's a fairly average result, so to say, for a side like UNA to take there in the bonus round of an opposing side, especially defensively. They did a very smart strategy of just closing that space, using that fast lane, isolating two players and removing them as quickly as possible. But once that fast lane's gone, same with the toxic screen, you have no way to cut down sight lines, and, well, the rest of the defense that's just lying on the other side of that wall, or both walls in the case of a fast lane, they're just going to cut you down as quickly as you step towards that site, and that's exactly what CMU did. Now things a bit more precarious for our, the defensive side of CMU. They'll only have these SMGs and a Sheriff for one of their players, and like a shorty as well in the hands here of Xandor, and it does not seem to work out. Does bury Etchuan down to 32 HP, but doesn't bury them into the ground, so to say, as they'll survive for the time being. Andy holding up close over towards back halls, just waiting for the prime spot to peek out with that headhunter. Spike, though, started to go down, and it looks like a post plant will be enforced by UNA Purple. And even then, flawless take so far. Sure, a little bit of damage taken, but you have all your players still alive and well. Looking to go ahead and set those crosses, find those exchanges, play for your ones, or even then better yet, play for nothing at all. Just find your kills and win up these rounds. But already, when in a retake situation, you still got plenty to work with the tools to so go ahead and employ that aggression, which actually, sorry, that one's gone. And even then, the initiator with the flash is gone as well. To go ahead and capitalize on that and put an execution to this, that's going to be the fifth one to bite the dust. And UNA Purple, the flawless round of the board for that buy round coming through. To be expected to some extent, but knowing that one player, Etchwin didn't really have too much to do there. They still stayed alive, and they can still carry on a bonus of their own here. The way you say in round two, finding two kills is just fine. You'd expect a little bit of the same when it comes to round three as well when the rifles would come out for that losing side. However, no frags game. UNA and a flawless result by the end of it. That is a huge precedent to set for themselves, saying, all right, even if we don't all have rifles, even if Etchuan steps up first and foremost with a Spectre to lead into Hookah and goes down to 32 HP, and we still survive and thrive for the rest of the remainder, the remainder of it and go about it in a way that we don't lose a single rifle no money lost so to say bar the utility you had to use a really solid result for una a much needed boon considering the fact that they've been facing an important amount of losses with that 13-0 score line at the end of map one they need that mental upturn look at the aggression though held here by cmu gans looking to come all the way over through spices but the turret gives away their a flanking position, a really great idea here for Dew on that flank watch. The job here of their KJ for this first attacking half. And they'll start off things strong once again as no money here finds the first kill there to Nyquil. Xander's in a really rough spot because once that thing fades, that one's close by, but they'll get the getter shots. Now looking for the next, it evens out, but no money here once again steps up big. And now to be UNA back on top. And I mean, good exchanges on side, at least getting there. You know, you go one for two. Central Method has lost a little bit too much in the process, but Gand is already on that reader once more. And that Phoenix player in that last minute now playing is that, oh, uh, Astra can't really do too much there. But it's a 2v2 situation. Your Sky doesn't really have too much help to work with, and they can't really be healed up. So Andy doesn't even need the heals. Already going ahead, shot down with that headshot coming from the Vandal. You know that's going to guarantee a kill. A 1v2 situation, Red only going ahead and saying, I'm dead. That's going to be a 4k for no money here in that round. Looking to go ahead and have a null command coming up here soon because they use one in this round. So look for the turnaround as fast as possible and utilize that shutdown during maybe one of these post plants aggression. It doesn't matter. You got stuff to work with is the point. 
Nobody here, the hero much needed by the side of UNA, especially considering the grievances they've been struggling with. They were very good on that first map. I mentioned it before. Yeah. They were playing the fate. They did a really great job of winning fights in a post-plant scenario when UNA was able to get to the objective on Ascent and actually plant down the spike to position themselves. They played great. And they kind of got fed a little bit in regards for their mental saying, all right, this is an expected loss. We're not taking this one too hard, right? We're expecting to lose out this map considering the 3v5. But now that we have a full five, you guys better fear me because I am about to send everything your direction and it's already showcased here as we even out the odds here for a 2-2 two, two score line and it looks like it's about to be 3-2 considering that we've got UNA with first blood and not any guns truly in the hands of CMU they lose one they lose two another player holding close you Octagon Xander sightlines cut down though by the toxic cloud they'll spot the shoulder here of Stan the car man and Xander wants to make sure that right click and kill and they miss oh! every single oh shot only one player having been dropped here with the sign of UNA and it's just NyQuil left standing not even a boost pack to their name just a room but a clean out the floor and there is too much dust here on the map of bind it looks like they'll be closed out quickly unless a miracle occurs and that's to be expected in a situation like this i mean a 4v1 nyquil if you get at least one kill here that's miraculous and you were more than thankful to be looking at that but it really comes down to what you can really manage here does get a couple shots off but doesn't really manage to get that kill there's so etchwood's going ahead and closing things out gets that round there and una purple when we look at this map look at what's to be executed here Unite Purple doesn't really have too much aggression. I mean, honestly, when you look at the setup, they have that single controller, and that's more of an attack-sided controller, keep in mind. I mean, Brimstone is very burst-oriented. That's why he can put all those smokes in at one time. That's why they last so long. That's why you can't see while you're inside of them. And with that stim pack available, you're looking to get on the site as fast as possible. So, I mean, even a follow-up from the KO, some sprinting coming out from Neon. You're looking for a very all-or-nothing approach to go on these sites, and you have to have... A really a game plan going into it you can't just run into it blind because that's the part of your brimstone that really trades off and starts to suck when you realize that you can't really have a follow-up you don't have a sky to go ahead and get those blinds back you don't have heals if something doesn't work so you have to make sure it happens here and now so your double sentinel can really start to excel here and they did a really good job of that I mean, surprisingly enough, you're thinking they are investing a little bit too much here, but it's kind of working out for them that every single round they win the attacking side is a luxury because on defense, they're going to look that much better. CMU needing to scrap back their map pick actually here for the map of Bind. Santa Carman, though, opens up for another first pick this one over towards Red of that Sky. Gan's able to get a refrag back, but look at the control that UNA have been able to force now towards the majority of site. Two players sitting behind Truck, one inside U-Haul. Etch went from Truck, able to take down Nyquil. And a couple more players lingering around towards Showers. That's actually where their spike carry of Stan the Carman is currently lying. He gets into an engagement with Xander, and they're just not able to finish the job once again. Leaving just one player left standing, they do have a tour de force in their hand, but... Look at where they're located, Dallas. They're going to be all the way back over to the B site. They have nowhere to hold. Go up to heaven and hope that the site of UNA will swing to a position to take you down. But if they're smart and they talk things through, which I'm expected of them to be, they'll know that Tour de Force was popped. They hear the giant call out from across the map from the beginning of the round. They're not going to give you anything knowing that a single shot could ultimately be the decider. Yeah, I mean, good look so far here for CMU. It comes out of Andy. I mean, who obviously was kind of a little bit of a reckoner in their own right in that last round, but didn't really have too much to do in this map thus far. I mean, looking with that chamber, looking to go ahead and play across the map, just going ahead, taking all those turret shots on the chin. Not too much you can do except just play aggressive as possible. Maybe get that spike plant, but honestly, playing for exits could have been another option laid out for them, but not really opted for as UNA Purple find themselves a fourth. So Central Methodist now kind of be on the back end of this game and looking to play the same level of aggression, you have to start considering that they need to be playing for retakes. That's really what it comes down to. Look to play your Viper Walls a little bit more passively, try to kind of play in the aspect of knowing how much aggression you have available to yourself and know that you're not using those stars for absolutely nothing. You're using them to set up, to cut off, to go ahead and keep players intact and under control. But we're not seeing too much of that yet as UNA Purple to just take the site. Central Methodist wants to fight for it at times when they really shouldn't be. Nine cool. A little quiet on the kill feed here. Maybe taking a bit yeah. too much of their own medicine, so to say, as they have just not been able to compete at the same level. And that's a bit of a problem for CMU. They need everyone to compete at the same exact level to beat UNA at this point because UNA are feasting at every single push. Three players remaining. That is the exact opposite of what you want to have. Do us the right idea, though. Tosses an inner swarm over towards Cubby, trying to flush Andy out of position. But Andy, at the right time, hastily retreats, and they'll manage to survive for now. Another no command popped here for no money here 
putting themselves in a good spot that is full site control and once again another post plant scenario for you and a though this time starting things off in a man disadvantage something we have not necessarily seen from them just yet yeah, and I mean, the one player they're kind of losing out on here is a chamber, so you're not really too concerned for that. I mean, you know a trademark could be somewhere around the map. You know that something else can be available. But I mean, even then, one thing you don't have available right now is going to be your Sentinel. That Nano Swarm, not employed anymore. You have to hold things down on this site, knowing that, I mean, full taste coming through from Octagon. You know, players over there towards the likes of spawn as well. It's a pincer play coming through. You just got to get those spawns off. You got to get that spike diffused. And that's exactly what they managed to do on the thrifty round for themselves. So a huge round coming up for Central Methodist, keeping the game close, putting them back to a one round differential and knowing that we're still in this thing. We just got to step it up at some point. All about the timing for Central Methodist University and that retake. Andy picking the right time to get away so that they survive the initial peak. Right timing by Red to swing forward to pick up the rifle to then get over towards Cubby and then engage as they let their teammate go for the defuse onto Spike. CMU well rehearsed well versed when it comes to finding the right timings across these pushes but the problem has been just losing those gunfights honestly you and a purple have been clicking heads just a little bit better than the side of cmu across the board i mean just look at no money here they have 10 kills the second best player has seven up to this point it's not been great for them but cmu are taking the fight straight to the face of una here in this round great job too the shell stopper good, good for one God. they're using that aggression swing even further and everywhere for una to lie down dead all of them in spices great position by cmu to take another round for themselves it's one of those scenarios where you have to go for one approach or the other i mean when you bring these aggressive compositions it allows i mean a couple options to be working off of you can't really go for that diverse play across the map but even then you can go for those retakes as i mentioned earlier or do exactly what they just did for an overwhelming round Bring that aggression into spawn. Just treat it almost as is exactly like a scent once again. Towards a 5v3, run to their spawn, get an idea of where they are, and just bring the fight to them where they can't lay out this game to their potential. They have two sentinels in their way for the post plan. If we get these kills before they get on site, they can't really have too much of an impact. Amy apparently starting to understand that these wins on the defense are a luxury, seeing that the two Sentinels on the side of UNA may be indicative of them being stronger on the defensive side. They've actually put the weights oh out of their God. shoes. Andy with a nasty flick to a second, even though they were obfuscated from view and a flash was heading their direction and furling towards them. Xander good for one, a little assistance by Andy to the second, but still Xander all the way and a shorty wow. in the back pocket. Where do you get the aggression, the idea to push that? It doesn't seem to matter though. They'll reach five first and they're one round away from at least guaranteeing an even half and una despite their big four round spree they lose another one here dallas they may be starting to struggle in terms of eco yeah i gotta say i'm just a fan of what annie's doing across the map as well kind of being that rat or even then just more so being an absolute nuisance inside of una employing judges as a chamber getting aggressive with those rendezvous finding those initial kills and just tping out or going for that operator or going for the typical play it really makes you so oh, I mean, just kind of second guess across the entire field. Where is this guy going to be next? What is he going to be doing? Well, this round he's pushing with every one of his teammates and seekers <laughs> through B long with an operator in hand. Why is he doing it? I don't know, but it's something you're not really looking forward to or expecting more importantly, but regardless, it's there and you can't push onto A because you're scared of what the setup may be. Oh. You speak their name, and unfortunately, the caster's curse is true. Andy misses a huge shot and can't oh, rendezvous whoa. in time. Two shots missed with a sniper, and you pay the price. You and I saying, no, 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 not this round, guys. We're here with a vengeance. Now only two players remaining in the side of CMU, and both of them were initially on that A site, letting the rest of the three be that aggressive force through that middle courtyard. One player coming from back halls and another one moving up over towards Hookah, it seems to be. But look, stand the car man right behind Xander. Xander's not going to be allowed to get a 3k this round. They may be denied in its totality, but missed shots here and Stan just almost not failing to find the kill. Gand though off screen, able to find one, looking for a second and will get it, but it's still too little too late as Stan the car man finally shuts them down. Big sense is here. Another round going into the weight of UNA purple there, and that's exactly what they want. I mean, even then, look at the kind of resources they have available to them. Four ultimates not on a round like that. You saw that aggression not really work out too much well for Central Methodist, but, I mean, it's to be expected to some extent. They kind of pushed the operator. If you had another Vandal to be working with to kind of bring that force up into the spawn, it kind of, kind of worked, but that cut off, those missed shots from Andy, it just makes things very difficult. And UNA Purple, they took advantage of that moment. They said, honestly, if we don't know what to do and we don't want to push A when we got a lap round coming through from B, let's just kill the players coming from B. 
And then we know it's free. Why not? I mean, it's one of those kind of telltales that you say is kind of just handed to you on a silver platter, and they just kind of took it, and obviously it was around handed over to them. So look at now the stance, looking at the ultimates available. You have to, I say, at least use two for every single round, right? I mean, you have four to work with. Kind of divvy them out. Get yourself a round knowing that you only got one for Central Methodist. Those should be those guaranteed two rounds that you want to make it a 7-5 and get yourself that guaranteed lead going into the second half. Nobody here sends out a flash once again. A little bit weaker in regards to the KO chains that came through up close with that pop flash. Now a little bit more versatile range. That's one of the right idea. Swings forward through the fast lane and even gets a great jump over to the side up on top of two. But player and Aobo will make sure that they uh, deny all possibilities of UNA engaging towards sight. Looks like an orbital strike was teased for a moment there over the side of UNA. But truly, I think they'll start to pivot over towards the A side. It looks like they've already sent their KJ that direction. Maybe just leave their chamber here with the sniper in hand that was stolen from CMU just the round before. That will, in fact, find themselves a kill there onto Xander. Not the greatest position for CMU to be in, but at least two players up close here to deny the possibility of a post plan to be fully positioned. No money here and here sends out another zero point. Shots have to connect here for Gandon. They are struggling to do so. They miss nearly every shot because of that. They'll be taken back in return. Andy, the last player remaining, and they're going to have to hope that they can get the job done. Orbital Strike not available for UNA. Note that they have lost the player at hand. Lockdown is in full effect, and... That just buys even more time for UNA to sit on site and do absolutely nothing with it, and it'll be a missed mm. shot by Andy. Yeah, I don't even think you had the window to take the shot there. The ADS Last didn't go through. You can't black scope. This is in Call of Duty. Trust me, I would know. Instead, you go ahead and just have to take the shot when you can, or maybe you had that head header out to look for these closer angles. But instead, a timeout coming through for the last round of the half coming out for CMU. A little bit of an interesting perspective here in terms of whipping out that timeout, but hey, Honestly, you got to look to see what you got and throw them and grill them while you got them. So looking at 45 seconds on the field, you have a Viper's Pit, which we really haven't seen very much, if any, influence at all from in this entire half, which is kind of concerning to me, knowing that Viper, as your controller pick, going for that double controller, we're not seeing Central Methodist really manipulate that fact. Having all these smokes to work with, having all this crowd control, these vulnerabilities to work with, these status effects, they're not really coming up to the fullest fruition just yet. And on this attacking side, on those post plants, that maybe what they're kind of going for with the likes of Unite Purple and the Double Sentinel. Timeout, CMU. When you've already seen UNA now come back in a big fashion, at least guaranteeing an even point, the bigger question is going to be, well, Dallas, how do we escape this round at least breaking even? They do have two ultimates to work with, but a notable lack of the orbital strike going off, and it's been a little bit of a while, and Stan the car man's been popping off. Possibility of a tour de force could be another danger for them, but already two snipers in their hands. I noted that UNA was going to start struggling with the eco if they were losing rounds, but they picked it back up, and they have been since that point undeniably at the top of their game. It's just a matter of CMU's first pistol round win, and the bonus thereafter has been UNA still trying to recover from that fact. UNA will start to work over towards Spices once again. Last time we saw this, Central Methodist University sent every player through there and found all, leaving three remaining. But it does not look like they'll go for that same strategy. A Viper's Pit all by itself over on the B site, hoping to keep them back. Hey, good looks here from the likes of UNA. Already going ahead, taking a little bit slow, looking to explore their options. Because, I mean, even in tree here, a Viper's Pit over towards that B side. But you want to go ahead and get a grasp of what exactly you're dealing with. Because... The thing was pushed really aggressively in towards the likes of Hookah. I mean, look at the kind of trade-off because of it. It's covered none of sight. So you're still saying, hey, base free. Why not run on the site, trap that Viper? Now they're in the circumstance of saying, look, sure, you got that down. But honestly, make yourselves a home, honey. Do what you got to do. You're not here really infringing on our right to put this down and make ourselves a home. So already. Post plant coming into this situation to cause the divide to be employed as well. All the ultimates coming out from the side of Central Methodist. You still got an orbital strike coming out here from UNA to employ whenever once you hear that tap go down. Yeah, the Cosmic Divide does little justice, so to save the side there of UNA. They'll have to engage more directly on a side. Gans good for one, but none of the rest of the team seemingly is. Red will able to secure themselves one before falling back, but Gand is once again by themselves, and UNA will go ahead and send them straight to the afterlife and to that second half. 7-5 is our scoreline. UNA, after a 13-0 route in the last map, says we want justice. We want map two, and we're fiending for a map three as well. And I will say, UNA, they typically feel a lot more confident on this map, at least, I mean, knowing that they kind of like this aggression play style. They like the map of bind, which I, I got to say is a little bit odd. But, hey, personal preference is anything. 
looking at the stance of the map and looking at this league coming through for UNA, this is a map and this is the half more importantly they're supposed to excel on. I mean, look at the double sentinel. It's something we don't see very much of. Let's be completely real. Double controller. I mean, double initiator, definitely. Or even then, I mean, as odd as this may sound, double duelist. It all sounds much more viable on a map where speed is the name of the game. And you're looking to get on these sites as fast as possible. Push into spawn. Get that control there. There's what we see in professional scenes where Yoru start to come out of the woodworks. I mean, it's very odd to see a setup like this, but you better wing your half right here, right now, and get this pistol around because that's where utility is going to shine the most. And he'll go and secure the ult orb inside showers. A bit of a noise cue for actually to start to engage on. But look at Gan's positioning. Back corner of showers. Close wall to the actual side of A. And they'll manage to keep their player covered. And they'll have a cross by them by the time that Echo was even allowed to swing their direction. Spike, though, notably absent towards the A side, despite the aggression that was seemingly being brewed up for the side there of CMU. They'll go ahead and pick it back up, though, and actually move it on over towards B instead. But it looks like you and A are not falling for the ploy towards the A site. They are going to leave their two players that were defending B still on B. And they're even going to find themselves a nice opening kill for themselves. Stan the Carman there with that headhunter. Goes for a second shot, but misses. Leaving just one left in the chamber. Having to deal so much damage and so much potential, you have to wait for the rest of the team to back you up. No money here coming from Hookah's side. Another player coming from back halls. Looks like the flank by Ganda that was brewing inside showers finally finds some success taking through TP. Red deals with Bakabak and now Stan misses the shot there with the headhunter, leaving him with nothing but a classic. Oh. It's good for one. One HP of Ganon inside Kuku. That could be another way. It's a wall bang, but it does not seem to matter. Andy says, no more from you. Stay quiet. Still, four charges to the ultimate. Stan the Carman's already halfway there. Yeah, and that's the biggest thing. I mean, especially on this offensive side. I mean, you can get that side of across the map. We saw that hole right there going towards Octagon with that headhunter already in hand. Imagine a tour de force in a situation like that. It's going to be a lot more potent. It's going to be a lot more powerful and probably going to need a lot more kills there in the meantime, especially with that slow field as a follow-up. But we got to talk about follow-ups in this round thus far. We see the aggression coming through. We see the round obviously going to Lexus Central Methodist, and they're taking full force of that fact. I mean, talking about these double Bulldogs being pulled onto the field right now with these full armors still in their hands. They're looking to not only have themselves a round right now, but they're going for the long haul. They're looking for a third round. They're looking for a bonus that they can actually win or at least get a couple guaranteed kills out of, and they're investing for it right now. Quick use here by Nightcore with the boost packs to engage themselves over towards Devil Stack. Nightcore was able to find themselves a kill there with the Spectre as well. Box box in the rough spot, and they'll be unfortunately left in the hit house. They'll fall short inside U Haul. Five players remaining for CMU, just two for UNA. And Santa Carman still saying, Well, my headhunter's not out of it just yet, but the Roomba is. It detonates in their face, and they're now left with only 61 HP. Red passes by the eye lines there, Stan the Carman. But not a shot taken. Up close, though. There, stand there for oh! Red. Another to Xander. A one-man difference between these two squads. Long range for Nyquil. That's not where you're going to thrive. And Stan the Carman secures there with another headhunter shot. Look at the HPs, though, of UNA. Very low, Dallas. Not much to truly work off of. And the Astra is still on the board. Concussive Blast seemingly That's utilized. Maybe the standing. Whirlpool. Doesn't seem to matter. Gander there with the Bulldog. And Andy from the flank doesn't even get the shot. Gander steals and secures it beforehand. A CMU will find themselves a bonus. But three. Three weapons dropped out of their hands, if not more. Because I don't think Andy actually yeah. brought himself an SMG. They didn't. And that's the biggest thing about it. Andy did not buy an SMG. Didn't even have the time with that defuse taking so long to go through. You're really choking off these options here for him because you couldn't pick up that Bulldog. That's something you really wish you could follow up and bring into the next round. But it's not a luxury. A lot of D. The one thing you have is at least one still to play off of. And a lot of ghosts and pistols in the hands of these essential Methodist players. But... That's not going to do yourself too much favors when you're trying to push onto a site. I mean, you need to have these SMGs or something of the likes of that, a Stinger, a Spectre, a Bulldog, or a Judge, anything that just looks to go close quarters when you're trying to bring that aggression. But we're not seeing too much of that just yet. Slow and steady, setting up for these lineups with the likes of UNA Purple, seeing if they can go ahead and get a little bit of an off angle. But instead, the swing up comes through. No kills, but damage for each side. And Sky being the one player to take that damage, surprisingly enough. The one player who can't get it really brought back to him. Rough spot to be in, to say the least, for the sign of CMU. It's one of the reasons why Sage is considered good or better in a lot of ways. It's like a map like Icebox to the Barrier Orb as well, but Sage doesn't bring much to the table here for the map of Bind. No longer looking at the beta of Valorant, where Sage was met on every single map. But Sky, with the rework to him, like you've mentioned before, an absolutely force to be reckoned with on this map, but... That regrowth don't work on yourself. You got to think things through a little bit slower. And you need to be there for your team to initiate. That's the problem CMU are currently lying within. Turret's still up. 
Unfortunately, though, you lose the KJ, so it's really a no point. Thanakar Man sitting all the way back over inside site, not actually back in elbow just yet. Three players defending on that A site, and Gandis looking for the frag here with that Bulldog. Note that the armor left. should be there for UNA Purple, so it won't be a very instantaneous kill, but a double burst should get the job done fairly quickly. Not in quick use of the paint shells over the top. The red's going to sit themselves in a corner, but look at what Stan the Car Man is brewing up. Good for three. Oh, looking for the fourth and almost got it. He has it. An ace possible. But note where Gand is or maybe isn't on the B site. Now having to take TP. Look at the assistance they're trying to give Stan. Stan will eventually be denied to the ace, but no money here was close by to find the kill. Round one by UNA Purple. They'll climb back ahead of the competition. And that's exactly what they're looking for, right? I mean, around to be expected out of them. Sure, they took some sacrifices in the meantime, but they're not really too worried about that. Honestly, even then, you mentioned that luxury during that first round after so many kills come out from Sam the Car Man. They have a follow up. They're also, let's keep in mind right here and look at the scoreboard and just take appreciation of this 24 and 9 in this game so far. An absolute menace to this entire lobby. We mentioned no money here, and he, don't worry. He's definitely the Robin of the man's Batman, but he's the one who's bringing justice right now to this entire. Field. This entire team of Central Methodist and making their life an ever-living nuisance. So, I mean, just keep on doing what you're doing. It's not really the best stance for the rest of the squad so far, but you got to lead, and that's all you're asking for to get to a map three, as you can see the aggression coming through the A side. A cause of divide employed. A Viper's Wall as well, but not really too much of a push coming out just yet. Shot sprung out now, finally by CMU. They'll use Ryan to the full advantage. Another player inside u and a second one now stepping out through that metal elbow. Looks like Ant... Andy Rowan plant down the spike. He's aggressing quite quickly, but the rest of the team was not far behind, sitting over towards Stack. Nyquil's able to find themselves a second kill. Etchman flashed and dealt with very quickly as well. An expedited push, and it looks like an expedited finish to this round. Should CMU be able to secure these last two, but look at what Stan the Carman has been able to do this entire game, and it looks like they're just going to continue the same level of devastation. Red off the board, punished for their very aggressive stance right below heaven. Looks like Stan will start to swing over towards U-Haul, barely missing the Viper as they swing back the other direction. Xander will go for the kill, finally securing it, and Stan the Carman couldn't choose who to fire at first, meaning they find no kills on top of it. Only one player having been felled, and Red did a great job to find kills before they go down. Yeah, I mean, most definitely. I mean, look at those exchanges, playing for those ones. I mean, just going ahead and getting those exchanges on the board to make sure you can have yourself a round underway. That's the most important thing. And we can see him doing that, not only changing blow for blow on players, but in rounds as well. Now, even out this game, that pistol round, really bringing equilibrium to this matchup and saying that, okay, now that you're on the defensive side, this is what you played for, right? I mean, sure, you had the element of surprise, a little bit of weird things here and there in the last half, but now... You're just kind of a little bit stressed out. You're just relying on these frags. You're relying on these players at the top of your leaderboard to just kind of carry your way to victory in these pre-plant scenarios, which honestly, I got to say, UNA, why not with the amount of attacking prowess they had earlier? They could push them to spot a couple times or, as well and maybe find some relative success. Nike will try to close out a player inside Bunker, but nope, nobody actually sitting there as at the current moment. Two players only defending that B site, and both players are sitting all the way back and back elbow. A stinger in hand for one and a classic in the other, and it looks like you and A are saying, well, guys, this round does not look that great for us, but we still have our util. That KJ there with the Nano Swarm, a Guiding Light sent back their way, too, is in a really rough spot, needing the rest planted. of the team before they start to engage. Looks like two players slow to the taking over on A site, and... They're all going to be pushing in from the same exact direction that back halls, which may be, unfortunately, the unfurling of their team at its seams. Nyquil takes down Stan the Carman as they try to cross back through that hallway. They also deal with the elbow player of Etchuan fairly quickly, meaning just three players remain. They'll try to take down the turret, but a little bit slow on the tank. They'll take down Dew instead. Bakabak are not able to find themselves oh. another, and look at what you see. Nyquil gets a 4K. They were slow, Dallas, in that first half. They yeah. were not playing great, and they look great right there, finally getting to use the raise on the attack where they thrive. And even then, not even really employing that showstopper just yet. I mean, that's still there in the back pocket for Central Methodist. They can employ that during a push, at least at some time or another. And even the No Money King here can honestly just wait to shut that down. If you go ahead and give them one more kill or one more ultor, maybe one more death or another round, whatever it is, so long as you give them something at all, they can find a way to shut that down. So you need to make sure to employ it right here, right now, before you know there's any kind of counterplay available for it. Knowing you have this lead, you can really nail it down. But I thought I had a crashing coming through from the defense earlier. You can see that Stan the Carman is trying to push up into B main, trying to get that aggression there and maybe see a lineup towards B. But once you hear that fire go towards A, and you know these shots have come out and nobody here, that KO that can shut down that showstopper is now dead. Hey, 
You just take that full W pushing. You say, why not? Let's take the shot somewhere, and it does not work out. Shot oh! spring for two. What a continuation of the round, though. A 3K before finally being dealt with. You need the sub to pop off. That's what they're doing. But Andy is still alive. Great shot by Stan the Car Man again. When you need a player, Stan is there. 26 and 11. We highlighted Nyquil for being really, I would say, lackluster in the first half and coming alive in the second. Stan's been here the whole game. 26 yeah. kills, 12 kills higher than the second best on their team. You would not have a squad, you and A Purple. You would not be in this match if Stan was not the catalyst to every push. This man needs a medal. Yeah, that's kind of the problem here for UNA thus far. I mean, yeah. looking at the rest of the squad, I mean, that's exactly what they're doing. You see that three of these players are inside of it, two of these players being even, and Stan being the only one who's actually positive. He's the man who can. He's the man who's doing it all right now. He's the one who's really going ahead, not being a catalyst, but actually going ahead and putting that backpack on, it feels, to some extent. To where I mean, everybody's employing themselves. Everybody's pitching in to some extent. But, I mean, in the kill department, that's just really being and feeling lackluster here, especially for a side where you're supposed to have these crosses set up these doubles and get those kills and he's beating you on these as a sentinel on the attacking side just kind of taking another note out of sand's book of what we're seeing just not doing it nearly as aggressively not nearly as successfully Nicole, cool. quick extension over towards u-haul dues up in heaven and there's only two players actively defending the side as of the current moment Considering the UNA Purple's already lost one. Magabok gets cut down by Nyquil. Continuation of what we should be expecting to see from CMU on the return, the resurgency of this round. Do still alive, though. A 4K is still very possible, but note who's not Stan. The car man is not here to really help and be that catalyst for UNA Purple. And this is one of those situations we highlighted before. When you have that raid boss player, that that top dog, so to say, that they get shut down while the rest of the team's in the dog house. They're stuck in the kennel. They don't know what they need to do. They don't have that catalyst, that forebearer of good news. They got to really do things all by themselves. And look what we're seeing. Just not happening. Echuin not able to secure the kill onto Gand. Red will eventually fall the first blood here for UNA Purple, but do will have to cost their life to do so as they try to place a turret and the utils out, the guns not out, and Nike will full finish for the job. This will be expected once again another round where you see those kind of initial kills going over towards the way of Central Methodist that UNA Purple in the half where they're supposed to start excelling, to start looking really good. We're seeing the ratio of the likes of five to two rounds thus far and a half where we saw only a two round difference where UNA Purple had the number of Central Methodist there for a while, but it seems like that number's expired and they've transferred themselves over to a new carrier. So, I mean, we got to see that kind of answer come out from UNA Purple here. Three ultimates to work with. And even then, I mean, some set up for a post plant, but you're not on that attacking side anymore. I want to see this aggression. It worked for a couple rounds for Central Methodist to get themselves back in the game. Why can't you and I take that same exact play and start to employ it? Because their attacking side looks so much better. Reds using the Tasmanian Tiger to gather intel. Nyquil will clear away the zero point toss out. With the turret down, it's kind of keeping CMU at bay. They're having a lot of respect for UNE, which is exactly what you need to see. UNE has been pretty much dominating them in a lot of these rounds, and even when CMU are winning, they're having to find stand first. When they're not able to find and secure that kill, they need to be very smart in their pushes. Andy, with a quick swing out, does finally deal with that you in, but Trademark was actually in play, and the slow field is down, making things a little bit slower for CMU, maybe buying a couple seconds for UNA to start to swing over towards the other side. Classic in hand, though, for Stan the Car Man, having to pull out the Headhunter instead. They're flashing, dealt with. Oh. Now the confidence for CMU will start to go out. Look at where they're aggressing. They were already out inside back halls. They will eventually lose Nyquil, who was that main aggressor, but, well, still makes things difficult because Baka Box all by themselves buff out the Brimmy Stim and... They're not hitting these shots, which is a big problem for him as both players will just stand there threateningly in your direction as Andy finds the last kill. Another one of these situations now, another one of the struggle buses to be getting on here for UNAs. They find themselves looking at 11 to 9. They had themselves a lead going into this half, and somehow they forfeited that pretty, I would say, seemingly fast. Now, look at Alexis Sand the Car Man still looking absolutely disgusting. I talked about earlier, you got to have these teammates rally around you, you got to have that group effort, and we're just not seeing that across the board because. I mean, sure, you and eight, they can cover one site. You can have a menace over towards one half of the map. With how small bind is, you can immediately switch things over, say, there's a chamber there. We don't want to be here. I mean, that's plain and simple. Let's make an exchange. Let's go somewhere else, see what we can do. And you can already see that kind of going over towards this hookah area. Looking for those initial ticks, looking to run into Stan, unfortunately enough. And even then, Etchuan, to go ahead and give yourself that tail to say, there's a raid set up, and there's probably other people over towards B Long. Let's throw that shut down there. Let's see if we can stall things out. And Stan, best of luck to you, buddy, because we're going to cover up my ground. <sighs> 
anywhere but here. The mentality right now for CMU's attack. Red seemingly gets caught out, though, and the ult war will be gained by the player here of Stan. But look at what we're seeing as well. CMU say, well, you think you know what we're doing? You really don't. NyQuil finally mm. shuts down Stan. Honestly, I think CMU say, hey, Red just died of Stan. We know where the chamber yes. is. We can isolate that player. Take them down. Cut their throats at the seams. And they're just saying, go. Send it all into the house of B. And it's working out for them. They'll be able to get down plants. They'll put down the cosmic divide. Spike will eventually go forward. And UNA now have to make a recovery towards the objective without their best player, which has been their biggest problem. And even then, they knew already that the player, the edge room, was over towards that hookah area. They didn't look to push through that. They didn't look to take control of it. They said it's another situation. A lot like we saw that Viper earlier. Play around it. Go somewhere else on the map. Oh. And then make sure you get those plays and you get those kills. And even then, do anything else. And that's what they're doing already. Two players down. Now make it to just one. And you have four players remaining for Central Methodist. Stan was the only player to get a kill in that round. And it was the first blood as well. You can't have that happening if you're UNA and you want to go ahead and tie this game up once more because the only thing that's inevitable would be, I mean, with a flawless record behind them starting right here right now, would be overtime. They still have to flip things up. They don't have that luxury of winning the game outright anymore. Match point, series point, Dallas, and the pressure is on for the sign of UNA. We joked a lot about the fact when a team reaches double digits, that's kind of the end-all, be-all. The first thing to do so is just so likely to be the team that wins the game. But in, this, in a case where UNA has been at the edge of that double digits the entire match so far, like three rounds in a row had to be made by CMU to get to this point, you'd expect them to put up a huge fight. It's just they've been struggling to find it. Bakabak goes down first with the man disadvantage now for UNA. Paint shells over the top. Nyquil goes around the corner and Etchion is not able to find themselves a kill. Stan the man is in the back corner, but it's not going to matter. Nyquil's going off. They're trying to say, we're done with this. We want nothing to do with you. Bringo 5 will still find a way to win it out. No money here, who was so good last map. Now all that remains, and it will not matter. Nyquil sends this game out. Xander, the last player to find the kill. CMU, happy with their performance, I'm sure, especially after a really rough game where, I mean, they won 13 0. It's hard to call it rough, but yeah. rough start to this second match for sure. And I got to say, honestly, I mean, we got to look at the consistency. We got to look at these yeah. players. We got to look at what was done across the board there, more importantly for Central Methodist. Sure. You know they had themselves a lead going into that second half. And we were expecting with that double sentinel to say, all right, here's a look up. Here's kind of a stance. And now you see that Brimstone doesn't have nearly as much potency on the defensive end. So you're kind of losing on your controller. You're hoping that double sentinel can compensate for it. But Chamber won't do that for you. Stan, obviously, that trademark's going to be there. But he's going to get those kills. And that's his job alone. That's a Chamber's job. And he was doing it. With the rest of the team not really there to rally around that, even then more importantly, when we saw the switch up, we saw Andy going off on that defense, getting that operator, going ahead, getting the kills with that. So he didn't need that, but to compensate for it, he had ran a Vandal, had to push up the map, saw him falling a couple times, and even then, more importantly, to the one player that we saw was asleep, no pun intended, during that first <laughs> half, NyQuil was really not in that game whatsoever. The Rays felt underwhelming, didn't really have too much of an impact in the game. We were saying like one in seven, what is this guy doing? On that attacking side, he said, this is what I'm doing. I'm saving all my energy for right now, and we're gonna go ahead and run this game with it. And that's exactly what they did. I mean, I was gonna make the point, who would I rather have and shooting on the neon that can be you know mid good on both sides neon can be a defensive player and an attacking player fairly well what yeah. i have the rays that has a we'll say mediocre first half just isn't living up to their potential but then absolutely thrashes the second half i will take nyquil every day of the week especially from what exactly. we saw there on map one we know they're good we know they can play we know they're one of the top dogs and they just had to show it again they just weren't living up to that potential the the top end all be all that they can and should be and once the yeah. second half hit, it was like they were a whole new person. They let their older brother hop on the keyboard and mouse. They were like, I'm I'm here to play and I'm here to win. That's the difference maker. Stan, the raid boss for the side of UNA, big props to you. You are disgusting by every yeah. degree. And I mean that in the best sort of compliment possible. But a single player, we see it so many times, Dallas, can't win you every game. Mm -mm. That was the problem they were running into right there. And that's why UNA lost. You got to be all across the board, very solid. And I get they've got two subs. Clubs, but you still got to be able to talk things through at least get an understanding because this may happen again maybe have to bring them back in all over again so be able to talk with everybody make good friends yeah, it most simply could be and even then i mean looking at the standings looking at how that kind of goes when we saw central methods be at the top of their group thus far we don't really have the leaderboard here to line up i can go ahead and give you a sneak peek 
UNA was kind of split up a little bit. They had themselves at 3-2. Central Method is sitting at a 5-0. They're sitting to, they're looking to be at the top of their division. And even then, after that first map going 13-0, that's not but a stat fluffer. Now, honestly, I think yeah. they're set for that now. If they go undefeated, and even if another team does, I don't know if there is another team who is. Regardless, they have that guaranteed first spot because of that map alone. It, it just literally kind of is an exponential growth because there is no toss-up. There is no downside to something like that. So already... They're looking good for the playoffs. They're looking good to start continuing things along and get themselves a nice trance. And UNA, I mean, as they now tie up their record, it's not horrendous for them, but, I mean, as you mentioned with those subs, things got to tighten up here, and they really got to get together if they want to have a good long haul for the second half of the semester. Yeah, round differential is going to mean a lot as well, especially if EMU gives up maybe one or two games by the end of that playoff session, right? They need that round differential, and this is a huge boon for them. Not so much for UNA, honestly, with the zero, negative 13 that they gained from that one. A good try to keep it close <sighs> in the second one. It was a really good game for the second map of Bind, but still ultimately falls to the victor there of EMU. Congratulations to them. Sorry, CMU. Stand corrected. Then congratulations to them. There's so many teams here in the NECC. We got a big league here. But that'll be it for us here for this first match. We got another one coming up right after this one. So make sure you stay tuned after a bit of a break for that one. And we'll see you guys throughout the rest of the week. Stay tuned for more here from the NECC.
And welcome back to some more NECC Valorant. It's still week six, and we're closing out the second series of the night. It's Midland University coming up against UARC Arkansas. My name is Lois, joined by Vincent. And how are you feeling this fine Monday, my man? Uh, I'll be honest, it's feeling like a Monday, which is okay, but not the best. What is the best, though, is the name Arkansas. I, uh, I love it. I'm glad that they are having a good time. Unfortunately, the map win rate not looking too hot, if we're being all that honest. Creeper, Yesmar, Perps, uh, uh, Saucy, and Exuma. Um, it's been a struggle this season, to to put it bluntly, Los. Yeah, no, you, you definitely take a look at Arkansas. Their record isn't fantastic. What is it? A, a negative 80 round differential here. They are definitely looking to try and get on that come up i mean you know roughly on the second half of the season it's week six it's time to try yeah. and get your your stats back up i mean you had a, an idea of what you're going up against so maybe there is some opportunities for them to step up against their opponents the midland university warriors and on that squad we've got zebo what king genius great name by the way nessie pnc and honey cutie or Honeycut, my mistake. Honeycut. So this this squad, I mean, you know, with the I three, it could be a cutie. We don't know. They might that's be fair. cute. I, I I don't know. That's that's yet to be seen. But Midland Warriors, definitely Midland in this bracket. They are currently two and two, <laughs> number five. They're not mid though, but they are in the middle of the pack. But let's see where they're going to be headed to on this best of three series. I, that's well played, Los. I'll, I'll give that one to you. We're, we're headed over to Ascent. Um, uh, to no one's surprise, absolutely zero people surprised by this pick. Um, and then <laughs> Midland bringing us there. Icebox will be next. Arkansas picking that map out. And Bind will be our decider should we need it. But uh, I don't know that we will. Uh, maybe, maybe now. The, today could be the day for Arkansas to get a map win. They, they definitely have shown that it's possible. Their closest matchup was a 13 to 10 game. So it was close. The rest of them, not so much, but maybe. Hey, and it's only one way to find out. Let's get this thing on the road because the teams are ready. The players are good to go. And I'm feeling excited. We even jumped to cameras before that timer finished. You know, that's how <laughs> excited we are. It's gonna be a set. Let's kick this off. However, I just debated you. Psych! It's gonna be a quick, uh, a quick little pause while we're getting this game set up. <laughs> Los, how dare you debate me? I cannot believe you've done this. That's outrageous. I, I want, I want a refund. <laughs> oh what yeah, that, yeah. What that's that my means, bad. I don't know. <laughs> how, how I get a refund? No idea. But. Apparently, we've been having some struggles with the new patch or something like that. Uh, I, I'm, all I'm hearing from our observer is something, something, blame Riot, which is unreasonable. So I think that, I think that we need to get, get these, this thing underway as soon as we can. And we will as soon as we get a player back into the lobby. Um, but, Lowe's, I do think that this, uh, this Midloo team, they do, they do deserve some significant praise for the fact that they have been pretty darn consistent. I mean, you, you mentioned... Two and two, you know, walking into this, they, they've had some ups, they've had some downs, um, but they have definitely fought hard for these wins. A lot of close games on their uh, on their docket. I see a 13-11. I see a three-map series last week against Central Methodist. Like, these, these guys, they have had to fight. Yeah, they're absolutely brawling it out in the server, but we'll find out to see if this is going to be one of those scrappy matchups. I mean, we did... We did I wouldn't say play up the struggles that Arkansas have been facing, but with a, a number five seed team going up against the number 10, you know, you, you take a look at the numbers and you make your judgments there. But I think once we get into the server and once we actually get a taste of what the Midland University Warriors are capable of versus Arkansas, I think then we'll be able to better make a judgment but if we're going to make some some guesses here, if we're going to make some predictions, I would imagine it would be Midland in two. Yeah, I think that's that, that's the obvious answer. But I, I'm always, as you know, Los, I say it all the time, always down to be wrong, down to be surprised, because that, that means it's a good game. It means it's an interesting game, and we'll get things underway here. This Agent Select, pretty, um, well, I was about to say pretty standard, but actually I'd say it's anything but. 
I mean, we got double duelist, which in and of itself is a little bit more rare nowadays. In the jet and the Reina, definitely not something Choose you see. Your You're gonna see a lot of Astra on this map, and Honeycut has gone with the Brimstone. And in addition to that, we're seeing a Cipher, which is non-typical. You're gonna see a Killjoy more often than not, or even a Chamber in that role here. So, lots of uh, weird things happening, but I am down for it. Cipher, Cipher mains rise up. Your time is now, and it's time for them to to find victory here. No, I'm I'm definitely with the cipher and the brimstone pick. I feel like they don't get enough love, specifically within ascent. But also, there's kind of a good reason why they wouldn't. At least with brimstone, because you're very limited in terms of the sky smoke range. I think cipher. There is a there is an argument that could be made that he's a, a viable pick here. Well, you know what? The the thing about it, Los, is viability. I don't even know that that's, like, the standard I use anymore because pretty much everything is, like, viable. I, I don't think you're you're really, like, hard-throwing by picking Cypher or anything like that. It's, this isn't League of Legends. Come on now. Um, but I do think that it's not... <laughs> It's it's probably not the the quote unquote best or most meta pick, um, so I'm not particularly concerned. But I do think it is is a point of of note as we uh, get into it. King Genius, as you noted, a uh, genius name is going to be putting nice. that cyber cam into a pretty cool position. I, I like this camera a lot. It is very well known, but still. First one to walk on into sight is going to be what? But no one there to, to stop them with that Astra utility. Zebo earning the first kill. Creeper too late to activate any star. Maybe a Nebula came through, but far too late. The spike's already planted. That's about setting up for the reaggression onto this site. Lots to look at, and they're already broken down. All players ready to move in. Now the utility down, and they're ready to go. Good hunt to get some information while they make their descent into hell. Creeper already getting one shot from tree. Some more support could be good. A seize even brought into the matter to get that good decay effect. And it comes to great effort. But really, yes, Mar securing two kills is going to be critical. Perps going in for the defusal. No one there to save them and give them protection as the double swing from Midland earns them the first round. It was a little bit dicey there for a second. I, I thought the swings coming through from uh, from Arkansas were actually pretty solid. They timed things up to deal with the, the players going down in uh, and, and fighting hell very well. Um, unfortunately, they weren't in a position to, uh, to follow up on that too effectively in Arkansas. Losing out in that first round. It is going to be uh, the full save by the looks of things. Not a single upgrade, actually. It's only classics, which I can respect. I, I like that. You want to get the weaponry out as fast as you can, and it looks like you're going to run it down A one more time. Oh, Exuma. Just no way to track out Zebo after that dash in. A good start for Midland. And they'll take the site with uh, two casuals, no problem. Casualties. <laughs> oh no, they're casuals. It's fine. <laughs> it's it's a casual entry, you know. <laughs> yeah, that, I, I see where you're going. It, nobody noticed. Not a single person. Nice dink there. One uh, enemy remaining. Sansi will ultimately fall. And ready. what has nothing but frags to offer? Right. With the headhunter, the only real weapon of note, but even that is not sufficient to do any sort of damage. Uh, that was not only flawless, but nearly flawless in that um, only one player even took damage. That was what who picked up the triple kill. So we are seeing that Warriors showing themselves to be very strong in the early stages. This will be a good measuring stick type of round, Los, because we are getting into that bonus. And I think that a good, a good measurement of where you're at as a team is if you can win this bonus against the less than ideal weapons pretty dominantly, then you're probably doing well. Arkansas, if they aren't able to do so, then maybe I should start getting worried. I think a lot of this play is going to come down to what and Nessie taking those long-range engagements. They're the only ones with the Phantoms at this moment, so probably leading the charge, and you'll have that support with the SMGs. King Genius, does he even... He does have a, a rifle. I'm not sure why he's, he's holding out the Ghost. Regardless, a lot of pressure being applied down mid. 
quite a bit. We see this a whole lot. This time, Ilsmar, though, going to answer the call. And that's a nice couple of kills to take away. Threading the needle and single player remains. SC can't do it. And there we go. As mentioned, you know, a, a measuring stick type of round in Arkansas. They measured up. Yeah, that was great placement by Yesmar, even securing one final kill as they died. And that speaks to a difficulty that comes across the plan, or at least that play, of moving up mid and into market. If you get slowed down there, it can be a critical failure in that execute. And that's exactly what happened here for Midland. They got choked up. They kept getting that engagement with Yesmar because they didn't have anything to block the vision. So doing that just threw them into the fire. But in the end, it was a bonus, so time for them to strike back. That haunt gathering quite a bit of information. The player on the site it is going to be a B aggression. Though that zero point should stall things out for just a moment. Great work from the KO. Finding that information, King Genius just kind of lurking around with this camera, hoping to find some sort of timing, but Exuma! Just walks out, finds two kills. Yeah, that's that's a Chad peak coming out from Exuma right now. And even more support from Yesmar and even down on B main, leaving only Honey Cut, the last one alive in the 1v5. Can't allow a flawless round to occur, but they've been easily spotted out with the haunts. There's the one just to ensure they don't have that flawless screen. But even so, some great responses out of Arkansas. Yeah, I, I mean, I'll be honest with you. I was already in position where I was kind of thinking that Arkansas, based on where they've been at in these last few weeks, I wasn't expecting a whole lot, but I'm already pleasantly surprised. I think that they've already shown that, you know, those score lines in those previous weeks might not be all that this team has to offer. And fair enough, you know, the stats tell a story, but it's not the whole story usually. And we're seeing a very different look as it's tied up two to two. Here comes that tour de force. No one daring to challenge it down on B main. You have very weak weaponry coming across the board for Midland. So lone marshal to secure a kill, but that won't be what given. A, Not even a chance. What a decision to dash forward there. So aggressive. You know what? It's because they had to get away from Yesmar, who they figured was going to be pushing up both Saucy and Yesmar. Taking their ones and walking away scot-free. Great aggression from Arkansas. We talk about defensive aggression all the time on this map. Ascent, it's absolutely critical. And they do it there perfectly. Zuma and Yesmar both connect some shots additionally. And King Genius, Marshall in hand. Hoping beyond all hope to find something here. How many options? And th there was no need for that zero point. <laughs> no. There was no need for that. But this is a, a breakaway coming from Arkansas. And, you know, just take a look at that scoreboard. 10 and 3 right now. Yes, Mar is doing a fantastic job at being the bulwark, being the one who could lead the rest of his squad into these engagements and even taking quite a bit on their own i mean they allowed to create some space along with saucy hyper to get those opening picks in the beginning of the round that's precisely it and you know you see a player coming out to such a uh, ridiculously fast start it definitely gives you confidence but here comes uh, the orbital strike coming through it's another fast a hit that was a wild one creeper just hoping to stay away from that orbital strike might have listened out or missed out on those sound cues with the massive sky damage but regardless, it's a spike planted, and they didn't really cost too much beside an ultimate. Not only that, but the hold that they have on this site, the potential with the utility that is here is massive. It's about getting in to this position. Yes, Mark. It's already got two. Perfect double. Now caught with the trap wire, knowing exactly where he's coming from. King Genius with the wall bang takes out the prime target. But it's perps. Going for the defusal. Not sure if someone was behind, but checking in the back at the vast, the very last moment, losing out, and finally we'll have the Midland University Warriors come back and stop that three streak. Yeah, two rounds early on. It looked very dominant. That fast A hit really doing a lot of good work. 
And it, it's now all three rounds that this team have won. The Warriors have just run it down A, which is really kind of interesting as they are poised and ready to go back towards B. Now, granted, there's a bit of a difference here, Lowe's. They have four ultimates to their name. So Nightfall can be thrown in here. Blade Storm going to follow. That Prowler already looking for some information. That was a huge haunt in the moment. Caught all of them, essentially. But even so, what will break on through with the Empress? And that's a huge entry. No one left at the fence site. Yeah, I mean, those ultimates, they really do allow you to find those entries. Both the duelists throwing them in. What was that interaction? The cage, it, it hit something. Maybe some of the shrapnel. I didn't know that was... You could interact with that. That did seem to be pretty off. But neither here nor there. Cyber cage gone. Now the entry onto site outside of market is going to be critical. King Genius, I think they'll actually survive that one, especially because the supportive fire from what? Coming out with the 4K saves their life. Very, very solid work. It's down to a little bit more limited purchase, I think. Zuma might be struggling to get everything that they want on the, uh, on the defense here. Arkansas after what was a solid few rounds it sort of hit a a brick wall in the last two and it's off the back of the first time just a very fast and aggressive play but the second one once again they can't deal with the utility thrown at them by those those two ultimates they're all vade there from the zero point might not have any information but can tell you that no command is gonna do its job and a flash to follow it will make the warriors think twice about this execute that no command is so powerful i mean it literally just stopped the push in its tracks right there and lurk for yesmar and towards mid this king genius goes down that's gonna deny a lot of the space that the warriors had to rotate out oh the dance is here yesmar not willing to involve themselves on this one. Potential re-peak. And Zebo does take just a tiny bite of damage. Nothing too serious. However, unless anyone is willing to make that big time commit to an angle. I'm just wasting their time and 40 seconds left. You need every second. Especially with a disadvantage like this one. But what stops that from happening? A nice trade though. And nobody's there to actually left. follow that up. What made so much base, but isn't able to be followed up upon that is brutal they are going to get the plant here in just a moment that gravity well very well timed to deny and working the spike will go down regardless of the tight timeline and nessie is ensuring no one has a foothold up in heaven zebo as well in tree expecting a push but so is saucy hyper winning out that duel it's turned into a two on two yes mark the prime player here is taking his time, expecting someone to be hiding in the smoke. But the second that they see Nessie's head, they rip it off. Now, Honeycut, the 1v1, not going down this time. And Honeycut, that's only their third kill, but a big impact one at that to win the one on one setup perfectly as Yesmar tries desperately to take this team in Arkansas and push them over the edge. 14 and 6 right now. And we're just heading into round number nine, but it's still not been quite enough to put them into the lead or at least hang on to the lead that they briefly had at that three to two mark. So you see another sort of weird investment. And when I say weird, more just a half buy. This is a save and another great haunt. Gives away the positioning of the perps on the site. Really only one. There's a, a major commitment to ensure that Yesmar can get that orb. And bring out the tour de force. So a lot of ultimates may be committed in this one. Before that can take place, it's a dangerous game taking control of B main. Kind of feels like the, the Warriors are unsure about how to read this, this whole situation. They don't want to walk into a blade storm, and that's understandable. What is currently investigating A, and nobody's seeming to be home, so they're going to call the rotate. Say hi, Prowler. 
Trying to gain information and what walks out for the opener. That's a great read. Knowing that the focus of attention is back on the tree, it allows what to make that entry and even further their foothold deep in the connection as they jump into heaven and look to send the rest of their opponents to hell. Oh man, and it seems that they are headed straight there. One way ticket included. Just a single player remains. It's Yasmar on the flank. Tour de Force is technically available, but he's just got the head hunter for now, and he'll have his head hunted by Zebo to put things to rest. It's six to three. And well, I'll be honest with you, Los, this is this was looking really good, and then I think it's starting to get a little out of hand. The Warriors, they have dominated these last four or five rounds. Yeah, things aren't looking uh, very good for Arkansas. So I like the idea of going for that orb in the previous round, but it almost felt that there was way too much of a commitment to make that happen. And ultimately, it wasn't used. It was too late by the time that Yesmar got to the next engagement over on A site that bringing out that tour de force, it would have been an absolute colossal waste of an investment when so much time to get that in the first place was invested, leaving some angles through mid, potentially tree and catwalk to be exposed. Good point to be made. Yeah, I, I would I would tend to agree. And and the Warriors doing a, a very good job of handling set aggression as uh, Arkansas. I, I, I wonder what they're, they're thinking, their conversation point is here. Um, for me, I think that a lot of this has, has come down to uh, the fact that they have not been very coordinated in their in their retakes, at least not in the rounds they've lost. So I'd like to see a little bit better coordination on that, maybe a little bit more utility invested, and that could be part, partially part of that rather, could be that they're investing a lot of their utility early on and not having it for that retake. They are so dead. Yeah, sometimes... Being frugal with your utility is definitely necessary. Of course, you don't want to hold on to it for too long. But dropping that in an unnecessary situation can be equally detrimental. Oh, my God. That must have been through the legs. Had to have been. It looked like it from that POV. That's outrageous. And the Tour de Force is the one that comes away getting tagged up, dinked down to low health. No heals available on this side, so... You are in a bit of a rough spot, Creeper here. Setting up to trade it. Yes, tomorrow were to need it, but yes, tomorrow connects the shot perfectly. And they're going to walk out at B. Back to their opponents. Uh, an interesting spot. I mean, what was required to clear out all of market, but left them exposed. Now is the time to move. They have an understanding. The Tour de Force is here, but they won't move. They actually back off. Zebo has moved up into Catwalk and even Tree. And they can get enough information that hey maybe there's for the taking yeah they have all that information 30 seconds left now they should know that yesmore has already rotated through no yesmore's been on a walk here they're not gonna have the idea the plant should go down it's on to zebo to really hold back these rotates it's a critical angle right here Securing this kill will be massive. It doesn't require them to face head on that Tour de Force wielder. And Honeycut is making an interesting maneuver down into hell. However, this could be a great angle. There it is. Followed up with the information that comes from the Nightfall. They know he's in hell. Honeycut doesn't have the angle. It's a one way against themselves, but their opponents are weak. Bring it out the Molly. You can't bring out all the utility. Wait, Wait a minute. Almost succeeding in that final moment as some serious confidence from Yesmar to bring out the knife spelled nearly disaster. That was such an outrageous decision. I cannot believe it. Arkansas, they they're not winning this game, Lowe's. This is this is a game they're down in, and to go for the knife is so ridiculous. Oh my goodness. You got to love the confidence, though. And, you know, playing... I call that playing with some moxie, you know? You're, you're just... You got that pep in your step. And I, I can respect <laughs> that. <laughs> to be honest, that was a, that was an incredibly winnable moment for a honeycut, but it, maybe it was a, a bit of fat finger. Three different pieces of utility were brought out in that moment by them. Yeah. So if 
that was the Phantom all day, that could have been a victory. Regardless, money's still hot for the Warriors going into round 11. Yeah, and they're... Interesting postures here for the Warriors. They they very rarely default into these rounds. They set up to go A or B, and that's usually where they're going to go. If that doesn't work, maybe they'll rotate. If they get hit with some utility, maybe they'll rotate. But it, it's very much a, a one-sided affair. If they're going to go towards the site, they're going to go as a team. Okay, a little bit of fake action. And you can see the response is a quick scramble of the defensive agents. So you can see, yes, Mar. No longer able to defend this site and follow it up with a great leer. It gives Zebo the exact opportunity they were looking for to pick up some kills. Yeah, great coordination there. You saw the rotates being pulled over. Two players moving left. back into the site at the wrong time. And they get both punished for that. This should be an attempt to save, if anything, for both of these players. Zuma gets a little bit too interested, and Yesmar left alone. Yesmar on target for 20 frags in the first half, which is ridiculously impressive for the game of Valorant. And another one's going to be served right up. And if anyone else decides they want to peek in this, I'll just be helping him pad this player's stats. Just, just an absurd level of gunplay that we're seeing from Yesmar. Unfortunately, that isn't always going to translate in a, a direct victory for Arkansas. Regardless, you gotta respect it. Yeah, I, I think if anything, it's a little bit of a tragedy considering how well he's playing today Last round before and the, the current scoreline. 7-4 with a man going 19-8. and eight. I mean, that's that is crazy. It's over a 2KD. Was that like 2.1? Yeah, something like that. Listen, I, <laughs> I'm just saying 2 plus because math is hard. And yeah, no, thank you. We don't, we don't do that here. They're the students, okay? That's right. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> There's a reason I'm, I'm not in college right now because don't want to do math. Zebo desperately wants to see this. Oh, he's going to be handed it on a silver platter. Was that zero point worth it, Exuma? I don't think so. We got some good info. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, it didn't, this is, it didn't help them rotate because they've gone to the wrong place. Yeah, oh, great shot off on Yesmar. So, a tip for the tack in terms of off the wielders. King Genius is a bit cut off now. But uh, with this consistent back and forth that Yesmar is doing, it's putting on pressure for Midland because every time he peeks, one of them is going to die. It does certainly feel that way. Yesmar made it into the site, but the orbital strike is still available. The problem is that the player wielding it is, is under heaven. Major threat right now presented by this orbital strike. Creeper hoping to secure that defusal, but it's all up to Nessie jumping out from the other side of the Cosmic Divide only to find their counterpart waiting for them. And it seems that there's plenty of time to make this defusal and they'll walk away with a 5-7 half. Yeah, I think Arkansas, they're probably pretty happy with that. 5-7... Like, it, it feels bad if you're Yesmar, but everybody else uh, is sub-10 kills. It's it's a little ridiculous, because uh, quick math tells me that Yesmar has more frags than the entire rest of the team. So Confirmed. Yeah. Like, I I will say that, that, that is that is definitely a worrying sign. Not that Yesmar is playing so well, but that if Yesmar were to, let's just say, have half that impact in the second half, then they would have half the number of rounds. And this is going to be a bit difficult, a bit more difficult, rather, as the attack has not really something we've been seeing. Of course, there's been aggressive plays by Yesmar and Saucy Hyper that have found some success. But as a whole, a lot of the kills that Yesmar has brought to the table is from holding nice angles. Yeah, and that's obviously a little bit more difficult. You're going to have to put yourself into those situations on the attack side. So, Haunt, nice, good information that spots both the players out at, at A. Yeah, smart. Holding back the flank, and what? What is here? This timing could be the decider of this round. 
some great intuition by Yesmar realizing that a flank could be on the cards. Yeah, what isn't going to press their luck? They're waiting. They understand that this is a team they haven't moved in yet. They still must all be in A main. You could even potentially walk into a multiple player hold. But what comes out with a kill and an overheal as well? So if there's any time to commit for more, it's got to be now. Going in for another. It's into perps. Coming back for a third. Oh, they want fourths. Maybe even a fifth attempt at this fight. They're losing health now. But Zebo is here to provide some extra support. Yeah, what what just taking that round by storm? Zebo finally getting into position when when what is able to play so patient. Great job. I love what I was seeing. The Warriors, especially what, like you mentioned. They, they realize, hey, there's been no actual aggression. We just know that there's been a haunt over at A. So there's probably players here. There's no need to push forward. No need to give away that free kill until we know something's going down on the A side. Then we can try and find some sort of flanking frag. It's ultimately going to be Yasmar that walked into that endeavor. But still, great patience overall. The Warriors playing a great game. This is what much more defaulty, now. isn't it, from Arkansas? Yeah, not not what we've known them to to pull off for either of these teams, really, to hold those angles. Everyone wants to go for it all or nothing situation. But now look how deep Saucy is right now. Unfortunately, they don't have the hardware to take a 1v1 against Zebo, but the fact that they were able to make it up there that quickly is insane. Perps have got to be careful. They've got the spike. Yeah, a little, a little bit outrageous to get that far forward. It's going to be a shooting gallery, though, here for Zebo, like fish in a barrel, as they all come through the uh, aggression there. We get into position where we're 9 to 5, and it's time for the gun round. This is where Arkansas changed the story, though, in the first half. So maybe we can that see that again. That is true. I mean, the, the pattern here could occur. It might end up having... Extra extra five rounds on this half, but again, I'm not sure how their attacks can translate into those great retakes, or from those great retakes, rather. So it should be interesting, but there there needs to be some slack picked up by the rest of the squad. Yes, Mar is just one player, and if their angle isn't very fruitful, it doesn't provide an opportunity to get that opening pick, it's got to be up to the rest of Arkansas. Yeah, exactly. The rest of the team definitely needs to be the ones to step up in this endeavor. Bring them down. Another very defaulty round. Two players towards B, two towards A, and a single watching the cat aggression, mid aggression as well. Genius. Not usual, usual to see the cages in that spot. Usually you're going to be seeing the dark covers, but they work just as well for the one way. Nice stuff, and it's a great threat, too. Just the shots from the Spectre, making them think twice. And again, it's a defaulty play. Not much in terms of territory gained, map control. Fully under the hands of Midland University. But if this fight goes the way of Saucy Hyper, things could change. And there it is. Immediate adjustment coming from King Geniuses. They no longer have the ability to look through A main, but B main is the real point of focus now. Followed up Exuma coming out with the flash drive. No one there to be blinded by it as the cloud burst gives Zebo some safety. They're hiding right under the speedway. This is a critical moment. If they can find at least one kill, they are unable to. Honeycut finds one, but they're cut down right after. Another great left. move from Arkansas. They've taken this round by storm. They've pushed themselves up and looking to find a victory here at King Genius. One on three. That is the requirement. Zero utility in hand. It's the bad news, but he does have the rifle to work with. Here we go. Not even going to get a chance. As it's six to nine now, Arkansas. Pushing themselves forward bit by bit, and that was very much a team effort. A great showing, and I, I think it comes off the back of that opening pick 
from Saucy Hyper. They needed to take what out of the equation, and with that kill specifically on Catwalk, it brought in a, an adjustment. It made them unsure of where this push could come from, as all the focus was on B main. Sure, you had the idea with the players stationed in the site proper, expecting a push, but with all of that utility put in conjunction, it was just too much for them to deal with. Early Haunt is going to give the information to uh, the Warriors over at B. There's at least somebody hanging out over there, but that, that's not abnormal, Los. That's exactly what you would tend to expect. But a heavy commitment, both the zero point and the Haunt for, for the D, or for the offense of Arkansas committed towards mid with zero information gained off of it. Those are two of the biggest info uh, gathering bits of utility at their disposal, and they got nothing out of either of them. I'm really curious how Arkansas are going to be able to investigate further without those. Well, all they could do is just wait for the cooldown on that haunt to return. Might have an option. Well, Zebo is an ever-present threat. However, timing is possible here. Knowledge of this Logs player is critical. And a good fragment from Exuma gives them the first pick. But even so, Saucy Hyper's up in market. No one was there to check them. Zebo's here, but all the knives go nowhere. Yeah, basically had a freebie right there. Dutton get the connection. What? Able to find the overheal, keep things even. Sight, I mean, it, it's not taken. This has got to be a rotation. King Genius going to get caught. But time, is it? There is there enough? It doesn't feel that there is. Yeah, the, the spike, it's in left. Creeper's hands. If what can stop this right now, that could be it. But it was actually Last transferred. It's up for Borbs to secure it. Left and they did. Remaining. They got the plant. And now it's up to the defusal. I think, I think they know they can just stick it. They know somebody had to still be there over at B. And yeah, it's going to go for free. Yes, Mar, nowhere to be found when most needed. And what collects a huge one on three ace clutch for what? What a fantastic show of skill in that moment. What with the decision making, realizing there's not much time. I have to stop that spike from being planted. And although they weren't able to do it in time, having that map presence, that map knowledge to know that Yesmar was nowhere in sight to be able to contest that defusal. That just makes a great play on top of a friggin' ace. Ridiculous engagement there for what? Just to collect everything at the very end of that round. Brilliant shot reaction towards the player, towards Cat as well. How do you come back from that if you're Arkansas? It's gotta hurt. Now, even then... The weapons are really not at hand either, so damage would be the optimal outcome. But the Empress on the other side of this smoke. Empress poses a major deterrent, but at this point, they are on pistols. So they can just send it. Honestly, there's information. Spikes here. What wants to push their luck and see how quick that drain will activate? Not going to give them the full safety net they were hoping for. The cleanup crew, starting with King Genius, was going to arrive, but a Yesmar one tap with the headhunter is going to give them pause. Spike down A. Yesmar, the only one to do any pausing to get anything done particularly effectively in this round, though. 30 seconds left. Gonna get. Tagged up, can't even see that prowler coming. And a nice close range shot connected by Zebo. Here. It's eleven to six. This next round is the kicker. A necessary one for Arkansas. Is they are they're gonna have the rifles. They're going into a pause as well. They're going to have everything that they need to potentially win this round. I'm looking forward. If this round is lost, that's essentially the map. They'll be put back on the low economy. They'll have to force into some weak rifles, potentially a Bulldog, potentially a Guardian, even that with some light shields. If not, full SMG rush would be the only play they could really run into. Again, we can look at their ultimates, and the Null Command, as well as Bladestorm, that's going to be their entry. They could offset some angles with the cosmic divide but 
That's if they decide to use all of them. But at this point, with only one round until map point, you got to be desperate and you have to be willing to make that move. Yeah, I mean, I, I think... I think you should be willing to invest everything here, Los, 100%. Um, and I'd say you could use the Cosmic Divide on entry. I'd kind of like to see them hang on to that for the pose plant, but that's just me. There's no there's no right or wrong way to invest that in, in my mind. It's just a matter of making the, the decision that gets you the value in the moment. So regardless of what that comes down to, it's done with the timeout. Time to get started, and time to go towards the B side, it would appear. Great opening by what? Using the Leer and the ground. And that almost feels like a bait. Just a, a BM to dismiss the second there was another opportunity to take the shot. Yeah, a little bait and switch kind of moment. I do like that. Shot for Zebo going to connect, and it's looking like 12 is almost a certainty. 3v5 now. And that's two of their ultimates that they were counting on. Follow it up by Perps again taking a hit. You do have the presence of Yesmar, as we have often seen around here. But what's what's the next move? Sure, a player is gone from mid, but B main is still an impassable area. Uh, that's the, that's the difficulty. What? Continuing to push forward as well. That's a spike drop, Los. There's now no answer to this. Yes, Mark, just ask to clutch 1v4. And honestly, I wouldn't hate him just trying to save. Might have to be the, the next move. Left. Get as many kills as he can. I don't know if what caught a glimpse of... Yes, Mar. Regardless, the information's here. Classic coming through. Oh, oh. my God. How clean is that? Free gun, by the way. No time, though. Well, that's, that's a certainty. Actually, Ten is he going left. for this? Surely not, right? There's just not time. I think I most just remove some more guns, keep the Phantom, give it to a teammate next round, and, and pop out that Tour de Force. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. No oh! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> As right after he says no to the corpse, that's what he walks into. <laughs> yeah, that's a little a little insta karma type of situation, I think. You get a little cocky, and then you get punished. So no one getting a free gun this time, Los. Not a single person. The good news is, uh, it's not like they're entirely broke. There's still some weapons. You want to play? Let's play. It's still not the best. They do have the tour de force, though. Yasmar, that must have been the thought process. Sibo, though, is going to take it out of the round early on. And th this is not the start they were looking for. Ultimates on the table now. But they have to worry about the possibility of walking out here and going right into that trap wire. Waiting for that cosmic divide is the move, but... It feels like the no command. It was squandered, wasted, only to have a honey cut in the side. Consistently work and cut down Arkansas with the rest of the warrior. A two on one. Now hit with that prowler. They know exactly where creepers at. Send out the haunt. Send out the seas just for fun. But this map is done. Thirteen six close. I mean. After what was a very competitive first half, I got to say, a little disappointed to see the way that Arkansas were taken out there at the very end. But you know what? I think that we need to set our expectations reasonably. That was Midland's pick. The Warriors, they decided to go to Ascent. Arkansas, they picked Icebox. So I think maybe, maybe we can see a little bit more on Icebox. I, I do think that that's a reality. Though my real concern, Los is whether or not Yasmar will continue to play that well. It's hard to maintain that level of performance in a series across multiple maps. Yeah, I mean, Yasmar has been the star player for Arkansas. There's no one who can debate that topic. And that is a great point. If they're unable to keep that performance, who knows if we'd even see them get to six rounds. But 
again, it comes down to the rest of the team. When you don't have that entry, when you require someone other than Yesmar to step up, it, it wasn't a very common theme where Arkansas could make that happen and fit that bill. Regardless, we'll find out if in the downtime they'll be able to come up with a new strategy. We'll head into Icebox right after this break. So don't go anywhere. NECC Valorant continues after this.
And we're back. You already know the vibes. NECC week six of Valorant. We're going to jump into the game. It's Icebox. Come on now. The collegiate classic, baby. Yeah, and I, I got to keep it a buck, Los. I... Uh... I was doing some looking, you know, because I, I didn't know exactly where Yasmar had ended in the frag department. But there's Yasmar, and then there's everyone else. All right? That's how it went for Arkansas's last map. And when when I say that, you might think I'm exaggerating. No, no, I'm not. He had 20 more kills, give or take, than the next highest player on the squad. Um, and and that's not to that's not to talk trash or anything. That's just... The reality, that's what happened. And so, if Yesmar continues to play like that, I think that there's a real possibility we see something better. Now, if Yesmar slows down at all, I don't know. I kind of feel like Losis might be a 2-0. -oh. Hey, I think even if this is a, a map three, that would be an absolute win here for Arkansas because they've been unable to secure a single map throughout this season. And oh, to yeah. take one, to take one would be a major victory for the gang down in Arkansas because they've been struggling, but they have promise. It's not that they're hopeless. They do have a chance where they can turn things around and, and become a team, well, that has won a map. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, listen, I'm, I'm glad that you have let them know they are not hopeless. Coach Los to the rescue. Um, but yeah, I, I would agree. Uh, there's definitely a, a lot to like with this team. We saw some some really good moments from some individuals. I think that, on the whole, it just needs to be a little bit of a slight step up. With that being said, this could be it. This is their map pick. So, I, I would tend to expect them to be doing a little bit better even than they did over on Ascent. And it all does come Select down to agent. the continuation of the performance from Yesmar or maybe somebody else to pick up that slack. Who knows? We're going to be looking like we're seeing a pretty standard icebox comp, I'd say. I can't, I can't see anything I disagree with. No, it seems pretty standard, but there has been a bit of musical chairs in terms of the aging select Saucy Hyper, previously on the jet, now jumping into Sage. They don't have that double uh, duelist this time around, but even Exuma. The KO now running with the Reina, and everybody is trying something new. Everybody except for Yasmar, which makes the most sense if it's not if it's not performing poorly. Just keep that thing going. Yeah. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. That's that, that was what was in my head. I was like, oh my god, I do not know the term. <laughs> it's okay. I, I, you could say that that's a slogan of mine. So I, I will gladly help you out. If it ain't broke, don't fix it, is uh, words I live by. Midland, we'll see what they have to offer here on the continuation. We do see Zebo going back to the jet. But as mentioned, there are swap-ups elsewhere. I think what is going to be interesting was leading the charge. Near 30 frags at the end of the last game, but was playing the Reyna. Now on a, a much less uh, aggressive and frag-centric role. Oh, whoa! I don't even I don't even know how that first kill occurred. Zebo with a great one tap on the sheriff and immediate escape is gonna cripple how this post plant can go down, but let's see if they can even get the spike planted in the first place. They get into position first. Nice shock dart. Should have been down lots of damage. Both shock darts though invested already. So the late round defense of a spike going to be a little bit less than perfect zebo when back he's gonna get traded though and what making a nice maneuver with the flank catching yes mar who rendezvous to a location that didn't quite provide the safety they were hoping for and the first round will go unequivocally to the warriors yeah the opening pick from zebo the follow-up the flank it, it all went right you know it was just one of those rounds where nothing, uh, no problems occur, and you're all, you're all fist bumping at the very end of it. We get into this this next one though, and we saw a, a very, very conservative approach from Arkansas on their on their eco rounds last game, last map, 
And it looks like that's going to continue here. Pay no attention to the uh, missed utility. What's going to hit the shot? Okay, well, I think we could safely say that's the round, right? That's very, very well done defense. <laughs> Trog it up. Coming from what? However, Spike back under their control and no longer smokes to stop their push. There's a strong case to be made that a post plant, at least the Spike plant, can make its, its debut here in round two. The difficulty will be the denial utility or even just players playing denial. That Last suppression, I think standing. they noticed both of them. And yeah, not even going to be a plant available as everyone flies in from up above all around. It's a uh, party of sorts, though not the kind that you want to be attending, at least if you're Arkansas. We got a 2-0 start once again, favoring the Warriors. This this round is where things changed for Arkansas. We'll see if everything changes now. Reinvestment from what? And interestingly enough, the smallest investment in the previous round made the biggest impact with three kills from what's Sheriff. Now they've got the Phantom in hand, ready to combat, at least with the, the long range full Vandal buy that Arkansas are bringing to the table. Three players expecting this hit onto A, especially with King Genius getting this information, they'll be poised with even more deft defense. Now the fact that the rendezvous is available allows King Genius to stick in this spot, but sticking around too long, it pays with his life. A very significant price, uh, you would imagine. Nice follow-up from Exuma. Turns that into two, taken down from the Vandal. Not much damage at all even put onto their opponents. Yes, Mar, sure, a little bit from the Marshall was earned earlier, but that's about it. Five alive for this post plant. I wouldn't hate to see a save right here from the defense. The Warriors really don't have a way back in here. Two on five is going to be a rare victory at that, but doing damage isn't a bad option either. And two players down already is a good way to start that endeavor. Okay, this is a crazy maneuver. What? Now bringing out the Viper's Pit to go for a defusal. Nobody can see anything. And this is a round that the Warriors had no right winning. Uh, bruh. Why? How? The investment is just so ridiculous. I can't believe what goes for the, the Viper's Pit there. And not only that, but gets away with it. There's no utility coming forward. And... The sheer value that Nessie was able to pull from a stinger at long range just hits two double headshot bursts with the stinger from downtown. That's maybe the best stinger shot I've ever seen, actually. Top two. It's not two. But even so, here's going to be an issue. What no longer in play? That's going to make this round a bit more difficult. If yes, Mar can continue that pressure and place it down mid, but it might not even be necessary because the defenses have been crippled specifically on A. What What is the investment here from, from Arkansas? They have some weapons. They have some saves. I'm just not sure what's going on. What I do know is that the skill of B has given a very large opening to Yesmar. Sound quite a bit of standing. The spike should get planted. And there's no need even for a wall with all of the control gained by Yesmar. Zebo caught completely off guard. Yesmar wants to continue holding this angle. King Genius there with a quick one on the operator. Able to cut them down to size, but there's still players hiding behind yellow, not daring to give that angle away. Crosshair set up the real problem. Is there a wall remaining as well? That's the real question mark for me. The Riz, this is doable, but never mind. No wall. The Hunter pulled. Keen Genius doesn't really have the time on the spike. Maybe he does. I think it's it's worth going for, but certainly not enough time if Saucy Hyper is able to pull that one off. It'll be the first for Arkansas, but it costs them everything. What? Oh, man. I feel like Saucy had, had plenty opportunity to get out. 
but ends up getting punished there at the very end. Maybe he didn't expect for the spike to fully go off, but regardless, a little bit of a mistake, and that is uh, definitely not as much money into the next round as you would have hoped. So those little things, they do start to make a big difference. As you can see, there's one rifle, one vandal for perps. That's it. I think we could look at that and imagine they're playing for the Viper's pitch. That's what they want. Get inside, get the Bucky activated, especially with all these close range, rapid fire yeah. weapons, take down decayed opponents. But the real trick <laughs> is gonna be getting into that position in the first place. Yasmar knows something's up, but how? how is Nessie's patience? I, I'm laughing not because of the wall. The wall is so, you know, very common, but just playing the way that they are around that wall is a little ridiculous. Oh, no way! What walks into it for free, converts it into a Vandal, doesn't get anything after that. And this is the Viper's Pit, exactly what they wanted, and Creeper is able to plant that spike. spike planted. Honey got hoping to find something around that wall, but the wall put up in such a manner in which that's nigh impossible. Ooh, nice shot for Yesmar coming around the corner. He's going to have a tour de force into the next one. And it will eventually be the round courtesy of the snake bite. 3 2, the Warriors stick the lead, but they are starting to fall behind here a couple of rounds now in a row. Is Creeper going to keep this Bucky? You know. They didn't get a chance to fire it off yet, so maybe they got they got a taste for a big buck hunter. But it doesn't seem that's the case. Swapping it out for the Vandal. A little boring, if you ask me, but it is <laughs> it is necessary, yes, Mar. You want to play? Without Let's purchase, play. goes for the tour de force. And this is a great moment. It's time for them to equalize this out. King Genius, however, strikes the first blow with Zuma gone and forgotten. Nice work from King Genius. It feels like whenever they're getting aggressive, they're getting value. Blade Storm up and over, but that's going to be stalled. Nice work from the Owl Drone that really does the damage in order to make sure that that Blade Storm stays back, stays passive for now, but that's only for a moment. Blade's refreshed. Zebo strongly considering another peek, and they might as well. <laughs> It only would work for them if their aim was true. Perps and Creeper denying that notion, equalizing things out. King Genius. Pardon me? Oh, oh, what? What? King Genius just running guns, TPs, and picks up another two, single-handedly defending this site with a 4K. Oh, come on. What an outrageous rendezvous as well. Like, you're on the back of the site, you rendezvous out. Normally, you're rendezvousing to a safe position. Instead, rendezvous to an even more exposed spot that I think it just comes down to the, the sheer unreasonableness of that play. Like, there's just no world in which you would ever expect that to be the case, that, they, that King Genius is rendezvousing into your back line. Like, come on. I'm, I'm, I'm just imagining the thought process. They wouldn't possibly expect me to teleport behind them. But it worked! That's what's so outrageous! What now? Looking to single-handedly defend B again. This time with some better hardware. It's the Phantom. But they're expending quite a bit of their fuel in this effort. However, look at this push. Zebo and King Genius have all but cleared out A. They know exactly what's going on. Three fall within the blink of an eye, and uh, look and you miss it. Exuma's all alone. Yeah, I mean, that that is massive info gathering at its finest. Zebo going a little crazy with that shot, trying for something, but doesn't get it. There's 40 seconds on the clock, close, and it's a 1v4. The bigger problem, though, is the stinger. <laughs> There's so many long-range angles. Well, I mean, if we've learned anything left. from this map, at least, long-range stinger kills are still a reality. I believe. Honeycut. You believe? Oh, oh, oh. I'm always a believer. 
Okay, fair enough. And you know, there, there it is. There it is. Only you have to kill two more and then run back to site just to plan. I think Exuma was looking to find one last frag before they got taken out. Well, they did get that. So you know what? Valid. We uh, we saw exactly what the anticipated outcome would be. Look at what we have. This is very rare. Double operator on. I, I mean, it's not unheard of. You get you get one player over towards towards B, one towards A, but it's actually going to be mid and A that is where both of these operators have come to roost. This is a money game, I think. A lot of money at hand. Well, here we go again. More A aggression. What? Just completely out of the realm of possibilities would not be there so early. Comes to their lackadaisical foray into a garage, and that lost them so much. So much gone. And Zebo eventually finding one if they just shoot blindly. I don't think it'll come to fruition, but... Even so, it's a threat enough. Yeah, I, I mean, the the fact that the warriors are pushing A and B simultaneously, whilst also pushing mid, is ridiculous here. Big moment for Honeycut coming up. Now realizing there's three, all three in kitchen. It's gonna be a discovery. Found out momentarily. King Genius, all for the first and even a second to follow. They don't need to follow it up because Honeycut has got their back. The first two for them for this map. Yeah, and well, it seems not to be a problem. Had collected four assists elsewhere and does well in that round to collect the final two frags necessary to close things out. It's down to a uh, another sort of half investment sort of round. Marshalls, I was going to say Yesmar might be going for a, uh, a Vandal just in the hopes of finding something, but instead... This is what I call the Breeze Special, and uh, it's not Breeze. It's, in fact, quite the opposite. Don't be a Breeze. Certainly not. Full, full uh, Headhunter bullet purchases there. You gotta work with what you can, and down, B. That, is, that is just disheartening for what to find an angle like that. And you have to wonder... What can your plan of attack possibly be? Of course, this is a safe round. But how can they break their way into sight when there's so much aggression coming out from the Warriors on every front? I mean, you got, the, the obvious answer is that you have to tr figure out a way to deal with that aggression for, first and foremost. There's just no way around it. What's well, going to collect another quad kill? And I, I asked a question as well before I get to the, the full answer. I, I'd ask, will what continue to play as aggressively continue to play as dominantly as they had on the Reina? It seems the answer is yes. Um, but for Arkansas, if you can't, if you can't beat them, join them, right? Just take, take the fight, you know, one V five or in, the, in their case, five V one against the aggressor. You just need to make sure that you don't allow them to get a kill and fall back. That's a specialty here, but also I think it comes down to, taking your own space because they're losing out on some major map control and this is going to make it even worse activation of the viper's pit they've got an option now do they push on through and it seems that they have to but what what are you doing able to take down perps but at a major cost of that viper's pit however on the other side you've got some danger You've got Zebo looking to be on the flank, but the flank isn't a concern. They're going full speed ahead onto B, right into King Genius's crosshairs. Brilliant work from King Genius. Getting a little bit far forward, sure, but ultimately will take the victories where they can. The res came through, but it's, it's not quite enough. At least not, not for now. Stuck at yellow is Yesmar. They're waiting for the toxic screen to get back into fruition. And now it's time to try and plant this spike. There it is. And the toxic screen about to go down, but they have the orb in place. They want to play for lineups. They've never been able to do this successfully. They so desperately want to make that plan, find success. 
It comes down to this initial peak if Yesmar can find the shot as King Genius isn't even looking. Another from Yesmar. It's up to Nessie now. They have the option to go for a resurrection. I don't think that should be on the cards. But with this swing, it could be the moment they need. But it actually is. But for Arkansas, they come back and they secure a third round at least to stop the bleeding. And now they're the ones holding the double operator. Oh my goodness, they've insta reinvested to the double up? That's it. I. Okay. If we see four ops on this map, I'm gonna. I, I don't understand what will be going on. I say do it. I mean, I know you want you want chaos, though, so I appreciate that. But four ops on Icebox is, is a little insane. But fortunately, it's only three. Oh, what a relief. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's so much different than, than four, you know? Zeebo looking for more, and they secure it. Unfortunately, Saucy Hyper wasn't able to keep themselves safe, or at least find that frag back. Cut down to three. They want to cycle those Vandals away. No, no one can recover that, but the money's fine for Midland. They were yeah. never concerned, but you have to worry about what on the backside. Spike down. You know where Creeper is, but the question is, how does Yesmar not not realize that? I mean, what was very slow and methodical in that approach, it's, it is not unreasonable for Yesmar to not know that, but what is unreasonable is that nobody was on flank duty. Nobody was, was actually tasked with that, that job, and so big opening from what because of it. It's going to be a 2-1 three res still available and a little bit confused at why they haven't brought someone back maybe maybe they're gonna bring what back yeah that's looking like it Ooh, great maneuver using that zero point because as soon as creeper plants they want to go for that viper's pit but not going to be an option as i say that the coast is cleared the creeper is good to go activate the viper's pit and they have to be very careful about this. One-on-ones in this moment are going to be absolutely devastating. What is... Oh, he is a judge. I was like, why is he jumping like this? But it isn't going to matter. I mean, the Warriors basically played that that retake or, or that defense as if it was like 1v1s all the way, and they, they ended up winning. So... I, I think that at Last this point, the Warriors the definitely definitely getting a little bit more meme than just kind of playing as, uh, as fun as they would like. Well, it feels that they've got some room for that. It's not as though it were that hell knife attempt by Yesmar yeah. <laughs> back on a set. The, the wildest play of all time but you know there was some merit to it because in the viper's no, pit oh, please you, no no, no I'm, I'm saying i'm saying uh to the way that midland played in oh. this yeah, i i completely okay. jumped <laughs> uh, but there was some merit to that shorty play because you just have to close the gap you don't really know where your opponent is and utilizing the shorty could be a good way to do it but up down, Fair. Tour de Force out of play. It's time for Arkansas to push up and potentially take their fourth round here. I think they might be doing so right now. A little bit slow on the uptake with the Tour de Force was King Genius. Burps puts down the spike and the secondary opening in towards the KO. But still, we've seen retakes happen to a bit of a ridiculous degree. This time three on four seems very winnable. Swing unable to commit to a singular target. It will be the Hunter's Fury. Probably good for a half. Yeah. Or maybe maybe not, but now some pressure. It's coming in from Zebo. It is a kill with that snake bite, but other than that, they can wrap things up with the second half the of the defusal. Yesmar, only in time to die. Yeah. Switching sides. Well. It is uh, not a Bond movie for Arkansas. <laughs> As, uh, we get down to the wire here, half, nine, three. Curses aside, this is not the not the way they wanted to be be swapping sides on their map pick. 
I think that a lot of this comes down, though, to some great coordination. The Warriors, when when they are coordinating, I mean, as mentioned, you know, playing a little bit silly sometimes. But like that last round, when they are coordinated, they're fantastic at it. The double swings were perfect, and we've seen why that has been so effective. Coming into this next half, we'll see what can Arkansas do on their defense. Two players shaping up over at B. It's going to be a mid to B split. Completely unopposed. Do they have any idea that Zebo is here? Or sure, a good kill by Creeper. Is there a secondary follow-up? Are they aware of it? Regardless, site's been taken. It did cost two players on the Warriors, though, just to make it happen. That was uh, an interesting gunfight. Exuma tagged low, but actually the heal, I think, already utilized two on four. What? How many times has what been in these clutches? Unable to make that shot, but is there a safety? Yes, there is safety beyond the wall. Oh, what an unfortunate occurrence. And that's what happens when you plant the spike right into that barrier. It destroys it, and it created a pocket perfect for Exuma to get the defusal. That is ridiculous. There's just such a small area to be in there. And so off the back of a little bit of a mistake from the Warriors, one that we really haven't seen all too often, or mistakes, that is. We haven't really seen very often from the Warriors. It'll be Arkansas to take the pistol round. We'll see what that, what that gives them here. First pistol win on this. No, they... No, they didn't get the, any pistols on, on map one. I'm crazy. Yes, Mar. Good opener with the Bulldog. I'll be hit with that suppression. But it won't be too big of a deal as there's no need to escape. Not in this moment. And even if the pressure is applied, there is some safety, some relief valves from the rest of the team sitting on B-side proper. What, though? In just a very forward position with no plan to follow it up. Well, I think the plan was simple. Shoot them in the head. That didn't really come to fruition, though. Ness. One on five? <laughs> Maybe a kill? Not even that. It is a nice couple of rounds for Arkansas. And as mentioned previously, this, uh, this round would be huge. You win a bonus round, you're going to be rolling in the dough. A good time for that to take place. And also, I think it's worth mentioning, worth noting, that this is also a, a much better participation from more members. Exuma and Creeper both stepping up their game from the previous map. And there's still more Valorant, more rounds to be conducted. And that's what you need. Because Yesmar doesn't have that star-studded performance, but they're almost reaching the same amount of rounds as the previous map of Ascent. A good point, you know. Yasmar definitely having got high impact, not quite the same. But Zebo with a double entry is gonna mean the A site is free for the taking. So I'll see Hyper beyond this toxic screen doesn't have any information. They've lost their tools for gathering all info. They know now once these walls fall is the angles they hold, and Saucy with a great shot. Looking to find more, but there won't be an opportunity afforded. The spike has to come down. And what is coming in from a flank that is just undeniable. And it leaves them completely available or open, exposed from what again. It's 10 to 5 now. The bonus will not be offered. And, I mean, it's so unfortunate, but Saucy was the only player to do anything into that round with regard to frags. Got three of them with the Spectre, and nobody else was able to have any impact so frustrating in that situation if you're saucy but the good news is that with the three players that they took out there's really not a lot of additional cash flow available to the warriors they're going to be in a situation where they've got to do a lot with a little and exuma doing maximum damage the headshot comes through and zebo down yeah what a a very aggressive play Expecting that to find great results. However, 
A continued aggression. It'll cost them honey cut. But they are able to break out into orange. And this expected, unexpected play, rather, leaves Yesmar open for the taking. However, Exuma is looking to keep this damage flowing. Viper's Pit and Spike both activated in the 1v3. The Owl Drone giving away all of the cards for what? If the Owl Drone weren't there, what? With a chance in the 1v3, otherwise it's not to be. So, no bonus round, but the first big gun round going to Arkansas. And I think that we gotta give props where they are due. Arkansas with a a lot more competitability in this round in this map than we were seeing in the last they've been able to gather rounds here and there but we haven't seen them have one of those long run of rounds that i think they're going to need in order to make a comeback here that needs to start here and now and it can with this with this thrifty investment from the offense not a lot backing this up just a lot of hope and faith in this Guardian to open things up. Cloud Bursts hoping to give some uh, some safety, but not the case. Saucy Hyper, good for one, but traded out with the Sheriff. But they're getting quite aggressive, especially Yesmar, who threw their body on the line for no real foreseeable reason. Yeah. You will Maximum investment, no reward. Rez as well. Gives the man advantage back over to the Warriors, but that's only briefly. Now the Blade Storm invested up over the top in a 2v2. Zebo needs everything here out of these blades. Recon Arrow not finding anything. That's consistent hesitation looking back and forth from orange to mid, orange to mid. That's what you have to take into consideration right now. It's perps. That's the only one defending this site proper, but that's all the way from Snowman. So there is a window up opportunity, and here it is. Left. Looking at the opposite side, Creeper, when they decide to look back, it's going to be a complete duel. However, taking the fight all the way into Snowman, it was Nessie, and they lost the spike and eventually lost their foothold in the round. Yeah, a little bit of a weird decision at the very end there to split up. You want to make those those ha duels happen together, create a 1v1, and then, you know, you just flip a coin, essentially. You say, hey, heads, we win, tails, okay, unfortunate. But or the Warriors not quite making the correct call in that situation. And ultimately, they, they did invest pretty heavily there. They had, yes, not the greatest of buys, but you had the res. You also put down the blade storm, so it's not like it was free. Big investment on that one. Drone. And now, large focus. Players here onto A. All five in the quick rotation. You could see for some effort. However, it's not fully believed that it's a hit. I imagine that it might be a rotation, but those two kills, that should be enough information. This is a full-on A site execute. Spike the spike planted behind the wall. There is a, a Viper's Pit on the defense. That could come out. And the res is available. Stassi now stamping at least one find. And there should be a player back at the site that went down. This is doable. I think this is very winnable for the defense. They're going to have to come away, though, and push forward quickly. Breaking these walls also makes it a bit more difficult to get that resin. And now with the suppression, no chance. Nessie right around the corner expecting these two players, but they are not expecting someone hiding in Jenny. And Nessie closes it up with a nice double. Yeah, I, I, think, that, I think that Saucy needed to be focused more on getting the res there. That was the... Uh, that was the way back into that round for me. That or the Vipers pit. One of the two, and neither of them came forward. Just a little bit too worried about taking those duels. And it gets in their head just a little bit. But Arkansas, they're not they're not done yet. Actually okay, actually maybe maybe they're in a little bit more trouble than I thought. Because what with the what with the only two players surviving in the previous round and then a loss as well? Your money's pretty poor. 
That's for sure. Yesmar. Uh, the biggest, the strongest link here with the op. Hoping to make some magic with that one. Won't be done initially. And Zebo realizing they aren't as safe as they would like to be up on the top of the tube. Comes down to where where's the teammate support? A huge kill from Creeper there. Might even turn into a second one. And it does. King Genius falls. But it's time to make their play. The spike will be planted and no one there to destroy the wall. Safe from the cheeky defusal this time out. Arkin and Sauce would be huge to find this. The Owl Drone confirms the frag. 2v4 though, and what? Again, in the clutch has been phenomenal. Looking at both angles, what? Goes back and forth, dipping between either side of yellow. Secures the 4K and confirms the 30 bomb and match point. What couldn't quite make it to 30 last map, so they decided, all right, 30 for this map. That's no problem. 2.0 KD was not enough. He's got the three at the moment. Warriors, Midland University, doing everything and what? Leading the charge. It's 12 to 7, five rounds, five match and series points you want to play, on the line. Play. Arkansas. This is going to be a long road home if they're going to get their first victory tonight. There is some danger lurking around every corner. Viper's Pit is an option here. If Creeper wants to utilize it to stop this play from coming up, they want to take the duel first, and they lose it out. There goes the smoke and the safety away from your enemy's sights, and the free plant ensued. The Viper's Pit activated by what? And it feels like an indomitable defense has been set up in this post plant, but Saucy Hyper removes King Genius from play to make things a bit easier, and the Owl Drone looking to get some information. If it were to spot out the, the Viper especially, that's huge. But Zebo, the timing swinging around yellow is just too perfect. And then Command denying any further ultimates to come through. It's on to Yesmar alone. One on five, and that's not going to happen. 13-7. Relatively competitive series for this team at Arkansas. But I will say ultimately the outcome we expected Los. yeah i i would say so arkansas did put up a good fight so i would say that I'm, I'm satisfied with what they were able to bring to the table it was not even close to what their previous engagements were and they've even ended some maps with 0 and 13 3 and 13 but 6 and 13 and 7 and 13 that's something that they could walk away feeling a little bit more confident that their style is improving they are coming up better as the season goes on so they could be happier with that of course it's not a win but it is something that you could take away learning but on the other half midland now going fully positive with their series score it's three and two they should be very proud of specifically mm -hmm. what i mean what went absolutely mad overall i think the combined first bloods that they brought to the table it was 13 on two Ooh. maps that that's an incredible stat line you always got to look at those first bloods i think those do tell you such significant impact but even if you leave those out over the over the two maps in this series uh, had 60 kills like i i'd say and in in the game of valorant like 20 kills is a good game for most players to get 60 in and these didn't even go the full distance is absolutely outrageous yeah, that is, a, that is a wild stat that we're seeing from this team. But that is going to be it. 2 nothing. Midland Warriors take it. And this is the end of the NECC of Valorant, a week six stream. So thank you all for joining us. My name is Los, joined by Vincent. And have a good night.